Right, here we go. Welcome to the first episode of Tony Talk Wrestling. Wow, 55 people we got here already. I thought there was going to be like five. So uh, we are way wow. above uh, what I was what I was thinking. So uh, hold, uh, hold on one second. Let me just uh, you know, I had the sound going and I was hearing myself and I don't like to hear myself because I think the sound of my voice is awful, but apparently you guys like to hear it. So, all right. Welcome to Toonie Dog Wrestling, the live stream podcast here for to for uh, Toonie Town Wrestling. And uh, we got an all-star panel here for you tonight. Uh, some people aren't here yet. Some will be coming later. Uh, others might uh, have to wait till next week, but we are super excited to have our all-star panel here. Uh, you know, hopefully everyone at home is giving them a round of applause and uh, <laughs> uh, disciplinary committee. Uh, how are you doing? My, how are you doing, my friend? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. Been a long time since I've done one of these. So, yeah, I'm this is your... to getting into it. I'm very we're very excited to have you on the airwaves with us here, buddy. Uh, you know, uh, and then uh, we also got the the one and only the uh, infamous destroyer of worlds, the uh, the cephalopod himself, <laughs> Evil Dose. Uh, welcome to the show, Evil Dose. Thank you very much. I hope that my uh, internet connection holds up. As you can see, I'm wintering in Iceland. Ah, yes, of course. Yeah, is that going to be that, that? That's that's where the, uh, the strike <laughs> begins, right? Uh, yeah, and of course. Of, and, and folks, uh, you know, you love him. You probably hate him uh, if you're an AEW fan. But he is awful wrestling, and uh, he is the opposite of awful. He is our good friend, and he is here to support us here today. Awful, how are you doing, my friend, tonight? Peace, peace, everybody. It's great to be here. Thanks for inviting me in. Uh, very, very excited. And of course, you know, also super excited. I've been on his show a bunch of times. You guys know him. You love him. His name is Phil Mox, and he is the biggest mock that I know. And he is here from Pro Wrestle Times. Phil! How's it going? I am, in fact, big, and I am, in fact, a mark. This is true. I, I was very uh, good on both those descriptors. Uh, yeah. And you know what? I think a lot of people here might be here for sheer curiosity <laughs> just to hear what our next panelist sounds like. Uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the one and only AEW Neckbeards. Hello, my good friend. Everyone boo this man. Boo. Boo. <laughs> boo. <laughs> Hey, how's it going? I'm Neckbeards. We are yeah, the same nah, person. Nah, 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 that. That. It's true. We're... <laughs> yeah, we're all the, we are all the same person. I am just throwing my voice <laughs> and doing a number of impressions. Neckbeard, right. my friend, how are you doing? It's Tuesday. You know what that means. Oh, Actually, right. It's a pleasure to be here with you guys. <laughs> and, you know, it's the first night of the Tuesday Night War. You know, Toonie Talk Wrestling <laughs> going up uh, head-to-head -head against NXT, and I cannot wait to win the Tuesday Night War. And I'm a huge fan of your work. Far. I gotta go, guys. Sorry, I didn't. Oh know. yeah, you didn't know NXT. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, so uh, you know, I'm on camera right now, and uh, yeah, that's kind of a novelty. But that novelty is gonna wear uh, wear off real fast, and okay. uh, I'm definitely hey, not gonna I, be on camera the whole time. I got a button for one second. I got a go button for one second. Somebody just said we're six of the most hated people on 4chan. Are we? Oh we're shit. On 4chan. Oh, I sorry. didn't know that people talked about us on 4chan. <laughs> I don't even know what 4chan yeah. is. What is that racist? Is, is that a racist? He's, a, he's, he's I've heard an elusive it, hacker. Is does. that a racist? He's the darkest place of the internet. <laughs> oh, I see. I thought it was something racist against Asians. So I was like, I'm not going there because <laughs> I here. love Asian people. I, I have a show called Garden of Doom. I should be welcome on 4chan. <laughs> 
You know, I, wow. I, I, I dislike um, Japanese strong style, but apparently I still am not racist against Japanese people. So uh, that's good for me. Uh, oh, right. So, uh, you know what? I'm going to kill the camera here for a little bit. I'll be popping on and off camera as the uh, the night goes along. But, uh, you know, for some reason, my arm really hurts. So uh, I'm going to stop the camera right now. And yeah, I'm going to just say back, I'm, relax. Just, uh, I'm just I'm just baffled at your ability to fucking puppet while running a podcast, bro. It's pretty, uh, pretty impressive. I'm not going to. It what? is um yeah it is a skill my friend it is a, it is a skill that I am not super thrilled to have uh, but uh you know my my right arm has gotten a lot of uh you know exercise over the years if you know what I mean uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know mm-hmm. once I w- once I discovered the internet uh, uh, oh by the way our first support community we, yeah, we have already gotten the first super chat come in for the night. I, I'm shocked. I didn't think we were going to get any. Awesome. Uh, yes. Wow. So thank you thank so you. much. Uh, our buddy Seth Tillman at nine, giving us nine ninety nine. I love the channel and I'm super happy to get a chance to support it. That being said, I'd love to know everyone's opinion on AEW's handling of punk and brawl out. Oh, you know what? We weren't planning on talking about that. But if you want to talk about that. He paid them. Few, he paid you. Yeah, he the man paid. <laughs> so you know what? He's dictating the conversation. That's that's how this works. Uh, so brawl out. I uh, see now brawl out versus brawl in. I believe that. <laughs> I don't know. I I feel like what are you going to do in this situation? You have your EVPs and you have your top star, right? And they are literally engaged in combat <laughs> with one another in your locker room while you're out there, you know, bloviating to the to the masses to the to, to the press. Uh, I think that Tony did what he should have done in suspending all of them. Um, I mean, but you know, at the same time, Punk was already injured, and like, so you know, Punk pretty much just got like a paid vacation. I think. Uh, I don't know, uh, this. What do you think about how how Tony Khan handled the brawl out situation? Okay, first off, brawl out. That's actually where my whole like <clears throat> up until brawl out, I was an AEW fan, and I did not watch WWE. Okay. Um. And then I started, at, I didn't like the narrative that was being, that was being put out there about how it just seemed like everyone was saying, oh, it has to be Punk's fault. It has to be Punk's fault. It has to be Punk's fault. And to mm-hmm. me, it just seemed like Punk was just, you know, I, we wanted to go specifically about how Tony Khan handled it. I, and I think, yeah, we said something about how Tony Khan specifically handled it. And I mean, like, look, at the end of the day. You want to talk about how Punk handled it? I think Punk handled it the way a lot of men would handle it. Yeah, uh, you know, I basically, the, you know, the the Bucks at Omega. I mean, look, Kenny Omega is is a massive man. Okay, you know, like he right. he is like a you know built jacked even. I have never seen a man be so jacked yet look like such a wuss at the same time. I, I think that <laughs> like, I think the I think the real shame in the whole situation was that it couldn't have been turned into something that made money. Right. right. Well, a hundred percent. Like that would have drawn money. Right. Like everyone's like, oh, there's nothing AEW can do that can draw money and turn ratings around. That would have done it. I mean, yeah, even before I was doing it. this, yeah, a hundred percent, Phil. Um, so um, I guess Dose, what do you think about what do you what, what's your what's your take on on this uh I assume he's talking about the first one, the where the Mindy's uh muffins came into play. Uh I, I wanna be I think everything is complicated, but it's also simple at the same time. There uh-huh. has been an absence of leadership from the top. So the fault is right at the top. The place is a zoo. Everyone run, does their own thing. And the EVPs don't really have any power. We saw that with Cody. So I think in, in the first brawl out, I mean, I don't think Punk should have said what he said in a public arena. I think that was right. in politic. I don't think he said anything that was false either. And Tony couldn't control that either. And then he couldn't control those guys later. In the aftermath of it, I think the original brawl out, was handled okay. I think the second time around, <laughs> you brawl know, in. Want, yeah, brawl in. If you want someone to be your locker room leader, you let them be the locker room leader. But then the whole thing, I mean, Jack Perry's a jackass. And right. and the whole thing I feared for my life is ridiculous. And, and people are wow. still saying punk attacked, uh, you, you know, uh, Tony Khan. Meanwhile, Samoa Joe and other people are like, oh, yeah, that happened. Him. I feared for my life. There was monitors <laughs> flying around and I was, I was, scared, was flying I everywhere. It's, so I think it's, at the top. it's the safest I, in the world if you come to AEW. Thank you. I think there's something to be said for the idea that, like you were saying, Tony Khan can't handle this. Like, right. you know that he went to CM Punk when he was signing him and said, no, you get to say whatever you want. You get uh-huh. to do whatever you want. And then when he did do that, he had no idea what to do. 
Well, you know, and, at the end at the end of the day, I think that everyone is always like, oh, Tony Khan is that's where the line is drawn, and he doesn't like you know take anything from anybody. And I really legitimately, however, think <clears throat> that a lot of these guys not only have favored nations clauses, but probably have creative control. I mean, do you, you think, think favored yeah. nations? Wow. I think I, I think I, I have heard rumors Moxley, that Moxley, Moxley. Yeah, Moxley. I've heard rumors that Moxley has a favored yeah. nations clause. The okay. rumor that I heard so was that Moxley heard. held them up when his contract was up. He oh did, yeah, when he, he was because he was still the champion and he was right. He, yeah, actually, he, he did do that. He tried to uh, just WWE wouldn't match the money, so he he was literally trying to go back there. I said it so long ago, people got so uh, triggered and mad at me, but now we're starting to see like that's probably what's going on with a lot of these guys, but they're under NDAs, so they you don't really hear about it. And that's the thing: lifelong NDAs. So, yeah, you exactly. Know, it's like that's what we said in the my NDA song, where it's like you can't title on me or any one of my friends, even after mm -hmm. your contract ends. Neckbeard, what do you what, what's what's your take on this? Your real take, oh, not your in character take. No, I'm not going to be in character on here at all. <laughs> no, but I, you know what? I think brawl outs being discussed to death. We already know what happened. But yeah, I will, right. I will give a little conspiracy theory for for Brawl. oh i do oh. love i do love these you can be the alex jones of wrestling podcasts okay number one punk punk wanted out of there he, uh, he was already he was already planning this visiting raw everything he did uh -huh. everything. so instigate well you know what i mean instigate the fight right. and then uh his his friend daniel brian sorry brian danielson uh -huh. happened to be on the uh, disciplinary committee so he just goes to him hey can you let me go please oh that's interesting sure that's interesting that he might have done. Oh, yeah, that that's definitely possible. Just awful, a very simple take. Awful. What what do you think about um the way Tony handled this? I like, guess not really so much the events that led up to it, but like the aftermath of it all. I think he handled it poorly. I think um he should have got those guys in a room and and hashed out any sort of issues they they had with each other. Right. If you if you remember, I don't even think were they even in like the same arenas at the same time leading up to the brawl out, or uh, uh, the you know, no, avoiding no. them. But yeah, I don't think they were. I don't right, think they. Yes. Uh, but I don't think it was like the 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 roster split that kind of happened when he came back, where it was like right. he was on collision. They made a whole new show. He was on collision, and you know they were on dynamite. And I don't th I don't think that was the the case. You know before brawl out happened i think they just kind of didn't like each other and it was like a gotcha. you know it's a, it's a simmering pot and and when there's a simmering pot in a in a in a company with strong leadership they're not gonna it's not gonna ever get to that point you know right they should they, they left so much money on the table when you didn't have these guys come together hash out these problems and come up with some sort of angle to which you know you see punk versus the bucks or punk versus omega later on i mean the story was out there the money was left on the table as far as i'm concerned i th listen if it would had been punk versus the young bucks or punk versus omega in in at wembley oh my goodness first off that's mm -hmm. that that stadium would have been filled and i know i would have been watching i mean the it, the, mo the money match was punk and ftr versus uh the elite all three of them that was the money right. match right there. Yeah. And then you or a handicap match between or handicap match between Punk and the Bucks. Make something happen. Get those two uh, in the uh, twenty the by Bucks twenty ring together. Now. now now we're a fantasy mark booking. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. no, you know, at, at the end of the day, though, you know, it would have been um you, you would have gotten to the point where I'm trying to think how to word this. Um Matt Hardy worked with edge okay <laughs> like he worked with edge and the leader right. while they were making out on tv every week like right at a certain point you have to have that business mindset i think punk saw dollar signs when mm -hmm. he came back and he was like sure let's do it and they just you know i guess there's some things that maybe maybe it's a pride thing maybe it's you know like I don't know. Can, how I, many can I tell you? So in? there's a prominent YouTube channel that uh, I won't say who it is or whatever, because they told me this uh, behind the scenes. But they had said that they know a wrestler. They know what went down at Brawl Out and what happened uh -huh. was sort of what you're saying. It was a pride thing. Like uh, apparently one of the Bucks, like while Punk was sitting, he like rocked Punk or something. Now, this is all fucking hearsay, but uh -huh. I'm just throwing it out there. This is what I was told. But. Who knows? Was, right? the, I, was I just, this person Chris Jericho? Because it's yeah. all now. <laughs> I was there in the room. I saw everything that went down. Uh, yeah. oh. Oh. I, didn't yeah. Yeah. Oh. I saw what happened. Yeah. Oh, in my mind. All right. Uh, moving on to, we have another super chat to get to. We have two more, actually. Oh, my goodness. Wrestling oh, Soup. My goodness. Shout out the chat. Wrestling Soup. 
is his right, right, right awesome. the puppet is on Marvin's arm. And no, no, it's my entire body. I have a full yeah. circulatory system and all and everything. Uh, you know, my my my, my orange furry heart. He says, much love, boys. Evil dose is a terrorist. Dose, is there something you want to tell us? <laughs> Jesus. No, I am the terrorist. You are the terrorist. <laughs> okay. All right. I just wanted to make sure. Uh, so here we got another one. Uh, George Capta. And this is, you know what, this is going right into what we wanted to start the show off with anyway. So more current. What did you all think about the CM Punk mm. promo last night? And by the way, thank you, hmm. Wrestling Soup and, and George here for the Super Chats. Very much appreciated. Awesome. Punk's promo last night. So I'm going to have kind of a weird take on this. And I want to know what you guys think about it. I think that it went. I think the promo was great. I think Punk was, I would not call it Punk's promo. I would call it Drew McIntyre's promo because he owned them. Punk was, Punk Ooh. was thrown. I think Punk was thrown by, when, by the, the woes for like for Seth. And I think that they were, they were snipping and, uh, you know, improv a little bit. I think that that Punk kind of got schooled a little bit on the mic last night. I don't know if you, I don't know if you guys agree with me. Maybe I, I, I need a, to watch it again, but I go got ahead. a little different perspective on that. Cause I see okay. where you're coming from, but it almost seemed like to me, like Punk was taking a step back and letting them have the spotlight. Mm -hmm. Like Punk was like, this isn't my match. This is their match. Let me, I know I'm in Chicago, so I'm going to draw attention to these guys. Right. But let me I, take a step I back. And let agree them go more with, but, yeah, oh, I he was doing the third wheel. Yeah, 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 like he was letting them use him as a crutch a little bit to get the crowd into it, but once they got him, he stepped back and let him go. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah, I agree. With Interesting. That. I like that. Did Drew yeah, McIntyre? Uh, hold on, Beard. Beard. What are you? Beard. What are you saying? Uh, sorry. Did Drew McIntyre just get entertaining just overnight? Like, no, he's always just, had it. He's always had it. Honestly, just came I came out of nowhere, man. I think it's a matter of he is finally being allowed to do you know, to be himself. I think yeah. that they're not as scripted as they used to be. He doesn't have to, you know, read from the paper anymore and not deviate. Right. I think he is finally being himself. And I think this heel turn is exactly what was needed. And by the way, I, I said, I think I said on X yesterday, I have been saying like, Oh, Cody's got to win. Cody's got to win. And, and Phil, I know you don't agree with me. We'll get to that later, but yeah. uh, <laughs> I no longer care if Cody wins. Drew has to win. That, that's where I'm at. It's not that I'm like, oh, he can't win. I'm just like, if he wins, great. I love Cody. But if Roman wins, awesome. You know? Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. my See, goodness. I, with, <laughs> with, with, with I told Drew, you so, you know? Oh, this, what you got? With Drew winning, <laughs> if Drew wins, um, I mean, if Drew loses, he could go into beast mode, though. You know what uh -huh. I mean? Like, it could be the thing that propels him into what's next. Because everything right now is about how he's not getting his due. He's not getting what he deserves. Right. It makes you wonder if he gets what he deserves, will the character take a step back? Mm. And um, I don't know. So I almost think that it might be better for him, especially because, I mean, it makes me think they might do that, too, because of the rumors that you hear where, like, either Netflix or USA want one champion again. And, right. you know, so... Uh, I don't see like the, if we're doing the, one champion. I see that feud being Seth Cody. I don't see it being Drew Cody, but that's just me. the the one time I actually liked the because they've they've tried the one champion thing with the roster split, and I never think it works. I think I that it, I, it it almost worked one time, and that was recent. Because remember when they built up the Intercontinental and U.S. titles? Like they, it reminded me of like, okay, this is Mid South, and the the IC title is the North American Championship, and the the World Title now is like the NWA Championship, where like the cut when it comes in, it's a big deal. Uh, I I, I kind of liked that. I thought it was pretty cool. I was like, wow, you're you're putting some luster. And I mean, they've continued to put luster on the IC. I I think Logan Paul yeah. has brought a lot of yes. attention to the U.S. title, but mm -hmm. I think that we need to have it around a little bit more. You know, like he, he's not able to do the. That's why I think WrestleMania might be it for him. Uh, but Seth uh, Rollins, as far as the uh, the promo, I think he uh -huh. he won a bronze. I don't think he was uh, all that engaging. Like I. I Without that song, without the the crowd, you know, doing the, the little, you know, the sing along, yeah. Seth just he's just not it for me. I mean, it's Drew so McIntyre wild. has 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 been more interesting. Obviously, CM Punk is way more interesting than Seth Rollins. He 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 was uh, he was just out there as far as I'm yeah. concerned. Yeah, no, Seth Seth Rollins didn't place. Uh, I mean, as soon as he got out there, <laughs> right. there, there was you could feel the energy sucking out of the room. As far as the initial mm -hmm. question was concerned, I think that Punk did great, but I, I do think that he stepped back on purpose, and I think that it was very 
unscripted. And they had some troubles with that because Seth Rollins obviously wanted to do a poll of the audience, but since mm -hmm. it was already decided that he was in commentary and he started with commentary and didn't get much of a response, they yeah, didn't really they know. Should what to do. At, they should have never hinted it. They should have never hinted at ref. They should have never hinted This was the point I was just about to make. This was the counterproductive moment because you had, um, you know, the fans exploded when they thought he might be the ref because then he can get physically involved. And then, you know, Rollins tried to say, Rollins realized it was going off the rails. And so he tries to save it by being like, that's his counting on. And then Punk ruined it by getting down and showing that he was perfectly capable of counting with his left arm. Right. So I was like, oh, this is awkward. Oh, no, he's going to get Yeah, creative carry. freedom. Yeah, and that's kind of. I actually liked it. I like that. that, he did that. Yeah, Me too. I, I felt like the whole episode of Raw was sort of Triple H went backstage and said, You all know what the fuck to do, right? Like, go yeah, ahead and right. do You guys got that. this. Go out there and like, count my money. <laughs> Because right. like, look at that ricochet match, even which I'm sure you're gonna bring up, but just even the ending promo with Rocco, all the everything or the segment rather, the beatdown, everything on this raw, it was just fantastic front to back. But I think overall, though, the segment, um, I, I don't know. I I I agree with the uh, committee there with disciplinary here about I think punk was he's like, let's shine you guys up. Like, I'm gonna do uh -huh. my thing, Barb with me, and everyone's gonna get over here. I just felt like this whole episode of raw besides the candace part maybe mm -hmm. was just everyone getting super over yeah <laughs> getting does every does anybody media, so. does it does anybody remember the raw the philly raw right after uh austin won the championship in 98 that's exactly what last night felt like it was oh. just like they're ushering in a new era i don't know what it what it's going to look like but it felt so much different from what they were doing uh -huh. in the last you know few months it was just it was on another level and that's what i felt like i haven't felt that way since you know austin won that belt you know back at the wrestlemania 14 i believe or? right and one more just to add to that sorry uh i think also it's like it it felt like this is live tv i can't miss it the yeah. whole episode. I don't yeah. know. You just didn't want to tune away. And um, right. Yeah. I just, that's what they need to recreate because that's what made WWE get so stale and stagnant for so mm -hmm. long. It's, just the, it's not even though uh, a fan might run out and spear Seth Rollins to the ground and you got to convince uh, Vince, he put him in a fucking front face choke or whatever <laughs> in order for Seth to stay on the card. But um, like that could happen. Sure. But it, uh, it's, it was very safe, live, safe TV. Uh, it's been beat mm -hmm. to death. Like, but you guys know what I'm saying? It felt so raw. And especially when the rock popped up at the end, I know oh. I'm, I'm giving we'll, this, we'll, we'll, we'll this get to that. Yeah. yeah we'll but get to that. I, that was out of nowhere. And that's how they just did a W like they had Monet at the start of a show. And then at the end of a show and we'll get into it, but this is, this is how you do that, you know? So anyway, sorry. yeah, I mean, so yeah. now, so here, I want to add one more thing about this, this segment. And I don't think this did anything to put more heat on the drew, uh, Seth match, which I think needs a little bit more, a little bit more heat underneath it. I, I think this I just got like over it. that Drew don't like Punk and Seth don't like Punk and Punk don't like either of them, but it had nothing to do with Drew's relationship to Seth. So, right. like, if Punk Seth is, does, Seth got his hands oh, hold on, one at a time, one at a time. One yeah, so if Punk does be referee oh, and us. he, and he, um, like i don't know i just see storyline city spurning off of that let's say yeah. he is referee and then seth blames him for losing his title to drew or something and then you have because punk ain't going to be out too 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 terribly long so i don't uh, know i think it did put a lot of more like extra salt on top of that fucking right. sizzling steak there i just feel like it juiced it the matchup more and everyone's interest in it this week but hey that's my opinion you know what i mean sorry about that awful you go ahead brother yeah go ahead awful what no just uh it's it, it just goes to show how how you know how they're spreading out the storylines. They could do this for the next year with just those three. You know what I mean? And and what what CM Punk is bringing to the table, along with Rollins. I mean, again, I'm just not interested in Rollins. I'm sorry, but the Drew CM Punk stuff. And Rollins has his hands full with obviously the uh, uh, the Roman and Rock uh, tag team uh -huh. match. So you can move him to the side a little bit and and bring in Punk. And McIntyre, because I'm I'm really I'm really anxious to see how that goes. Can I tell you my fantasy booking for what I would do at WrestleMania? If you if I can put my fantasy mock booking hat on for a second, <laughs> uh, you Love know, it. I would have so I would do uh, obviously Bloodline goes over and in, in the tag match Bloodline rules, but in, in during it Seth gets hurt 
You you take out his knee. You, you take out his knee because that was the thing that was bothering him a couple months ago. You take out his knee, and then Drew has a bullseye target the next night, and he and Drew wins. And then you've got Seth ripe for a heel turn against Cody because I I stood by you. I I was there with you. I stood side by side with you against <laughs> insurmountable odds, and you gained everything while I lost everything. That's the story that I would love to that I would See, write if it were me. If we're the, if we're gonna go in the if we're going to go into the fantasy booking stuff, let me cook for one second. Okay, go. Um, away. go. Just for a second. I, it, I see Seth turning, absolutely. But I see it at the Raw after WrestleMania. Okay. <clears throat> I see him going through making sure Cody holds on to that title. Mm -hmm. Making sure that Roman, because he does hate Roman. So making right. sure that Roman gets beat and that gets done. But then the next night on Mania, or next night after Mania, he he he's the architect right like that was his thing was that he he pieced things together and he did what he had to do to get uh -huh. everyone in the right situation for his advantage right and I don't think so uh, to I get don't by the way guys i know we've had a couple more super chats come in i think um as they're coming in i'm gonna take little breaks and and read off super chats and do it like that i think well sure um, thanks yeah, so continue this. I'm sorry, I had to interrupt. I didn't want them to think I was ignoring the super chats. No, no, no someone was answering. So oh, was sorry. Saying, I, I don't think that it's going to be all that. I think by after Mania, Cody's going to be the champion on SmackDown, and you're going to have a different champion on Raw. So I think they're they're going to want to separate that. I I do, you know, everyone in the chat's going. You had me at Seth's getting injured, and I'm the same. Uh -huh. And they can you know put him and Becky off TV for a while because they're both yeah. getting stale. Uh, what I see possibly happen is Drew winning the title, but then Priest cashes in, maybe unsuccessfully, but but either they way, they got to do something with that soon. Oh yeah, my god, that's it's getting but, fucking stale. You want to talk about stale? Drew loses his his heat, you know, right away, and he goes crazy. He he just snaps. He goes to he goes to next level heel. So that you know, that's more what I see happening here. Mm. But uh, okay, uh, you know. Punk said it during during his segment. He says, "I'm going to make you both interesting," and that and that's what he did. To, at least for Drew, Seth. I, mm. I, I don't think there's anything to, do with Seth to make him interesting. Any <laughs> the one thing that Punk said though, when he talked about Seth wearing high heels, and then Seth came out, and I'm like, "Oh, he's wearing high heels." Yeah. Oh, yeah. he is. Wearing yeah. High yeah. Platform high heels. shoes. Yeah. Incredible. Like, oh my goodness, he's like wearing stripper <laughs> shoes. <laughs> we're we're yeah. only paying attention to his shoes, not everything else. Uh, well, you know, I'm I'm used to everything else. I'm kind of like <laughs> numb to all that. Like it, it's been going on for so long with all the crazy outfits. <laughs> um, okay, so James Smith, by the way, says to us, "Will Cody be able to carry the company as champ?" That's a good question. I mean, it's, I yeah. per personally, it's, it's, I think yes, he can. <laughs> However, I it's a matter of whether or not the audience is patient. Fickle with him. fans, fickle, fickle fans, fan, exactly, fickle fans. Yeah, I think that's what I was gonna... the... Oh, neckbeard, what do you got? Sorry, that's what I was going to say too. He's he's basically he's Captain America personified. Mm -hmm. Of course, he can carry and be the top, top baby face. But but a year from now, you know how this goes, right? They're gonna the fans are gonna start turning on him. Oh again. yeah, he's gonna become yeah. the one. He's gonna become the polarizing figure again. Yeah, I, right? I don't know. Exactly. I don't know. I think I think a lot of those guys are gone. I think a lot of those fans that were out in the crowd booing the baby faces, uh -huh. you know, seven eight years ago. I think they're watching AEW. I think they're the ones that booed point. Cody out of AEW. Yeah, uh, yeah that, that is a point. Because that which what about Seth? And I know that in our community, he's not very over. But Seth is still over to the crowds. Yeah, Seth he's super over to the, the casual, like the and, you know. And yeah. that's and I don't think they're going to turn on Cody the way they turned on Cena because I don't think it's the same fan base anymore. Yeah. Um, and it's also not the same Booker. I mean, well, and also book these guys, you know, we've, we've well, been in PG WWE for a long time now, like, like very long time. And with Cena, you were getting the, I think Cena's vitriolic reaction. I don't know if that's even a word, but uh, the, reaction that people had to see, <laughs> the reaction that people had to Cena, I feel was the last remnants of the Attitude Era fans who were, um, you know, fighting back against what they perceived to be this hard left turn. Like we went from Stone Cold Steve Austin in the rock to John Cena and I don't like it. So I'm going to boo him. And my girlfriend, right. my girlfriend cheers for him. So I hate him because I can't be that much right. of a man. But I mean, at right. the end of the day, because at first I was like, I'm like, how do you, how are you going to boo a guy? Who's like, Oh, your kid wants to go to WrestleMania. I just, he's, he's bought like a quarter of that stadium. their tickets to <laughs> WrestleMania and hotel and airfare. And you know, it's but then again, John Cena has set the, the record for make a wishes, you know, for the make a wish foundation. So, right. 
Uh, I think Cody. I think Cody has got the buying people the, tickets the, the, is different. He, he'll yeah. cheer you there in real time. Yeah. The Make a wish kids can't cheer in real time. That's, in, in the, that's in true. The arena. That's and people didn't see the Make a Wish stuff. It all happened behind the scenes. Right. Um, I, the, I what think, do you guys? Oh, yeah, sorry, my bad. Um, I was just going to say the fickle fans I'm thinking of though are the people who were cheering when Roman came or when the Rock came out and said, "I'll God. sit at the head of the table." Everyone cheers. Then the Rock yeah. comes back. They all start fucking crying about Cody. And then I think those same people. Will the same people who are saying like Sami Zayn should have beat Roman are the same people who are going to cry when Sami dethrones Gunther at WrestleMania <laughs> or Backlash, and they're going to cry about it and fucking. That's but they, but what, those are the people that I think. That's who I'm talking about, Fickle. I think Cody wins the title in three months. They go, man, for real, it's kind of a, it's been a mid run. It's been okay. mid, and WWE's <laughs> pivoted because of those people. So I don't know if that force is strong enough, but I can I can see the other side. Uh -huh. Now, I think I think that if 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 the stories are there, I think they'll I think the reason that they're turning on Sammy isn't because of Sammy. I think it's because the story was so strong with Gable. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's it. It's not because they hate Sammy. It's because WWE gave us four months of a story and not only and, and kept doing it online while they weren't doing it on TV to right. get us behind Gable. And then at the last minute, pulled that rug out and said, all of that goodwill that you have for Chad Gable, give it to Sammy. And people right. don't like that. But if you don't do that with Cody, I don't think it's going to be. And the thing with The Rock was that people love The Rock, but they don't love The Rock taking the goodwill from someone else and trying to put it on him. Uh -huh. It was Cody. People right. thought it was Cody's story and The Rock was stealing it. That's what people right. thought. As long as they don't make a big jump like that, Cody will be fine. It's it's the... WWE does really well at booking goodwill for people, but then right. they seem to have a problem with following through. And, True. Now, you know, yeah, yeah. So now, I think that's the issue more more so than the fans being fickle. I think the issue. I think that's the issue. Uh, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I definitely see that side of it. I just, uh, I just know that like, you know, Sammy was super over and I know that uh, I'm, I'm certain Triple H wants to repay him for that. Obviously he's, he's a guy who might not ever get the world title, but he's the guy who, if anyone's going to beat Gunther streak, I mean, I could see them choosing a guy who people were saying, Oh, he should have beat Roman streak, you know? So um, I, I don't know though, uh, but I do, I do agree with you, but I just think the fans will turn on Cody's reign. As soon as he gets the belt, the chase is always more fun than the, that is, that is, that is true. The yeah. journey, it is more the journey, uh, with a baby face. It is always more the journey than yeah. the destination. I've always said that that's the story that you want to tell. You want, you want him chasing the dragon, right. you know, once, once you're up on there, chasing the dragon might've been a bad you know, <laughs> example. You're chasing the dragon with a monkey on your back. No, the, uh, but the uh, um, you, you know, you you're trying to topple the empire as opposed to like the story that you're going to tell after the empire is toppled. And it's like you know, we needed a new empire because right. you know what, the. What do you think? What do you think Triple H or the the writing crew should do to keep the momentum up after Cody wins the championship? What, what sort of things can they writing. do? Randy right. Orton maybe turning, like bringing up shit yeah. from his past, even though that's a little, ooh, right. he cries about his daddy, brings up the shit from his past. Uh -huh. But like whoever wins the title from Roman has to be that super mega over baby face like Cody is, though. I so mean, I'm look, not denying, like, he's the guy, you know, but at the same mm -hmm. token, whatever. Yeah, sorry, what were you going to say, Mark? I, I at the, at the end of the day, you know, Randy, Randy has, it's not like Randy has never done a storyline like that before. Can we, do we all remember? Oh, Ray, Eddie's not up there. Eddie's down there. Yes, beat, yes, beat, right. beat in hell. Like, yeah. like you couldn't, you couldn't <laughs> wait for us to like, like we, we got it when you said down there, Randy, we don't, we don't think you mean Florida. Like, right. <laughs> Right. In hell, like come on! I think you got to depending on who you ask. Florida can be uh, considered. Well, that is hell, true. Who you ask, but... I think I you got to go. I think that's what um, hold on, AJ hold on. Styles this... is for. I mean, AJ Styles is is the heel. He's instantly in the in a title program. He's going to have great matches, but he's not going to win, and no one's really expecting uh -huh. him to win. But it, you know, so you get that transition. But all you need are villains, and uh -huh. Yeah, and someone not cool villains, him. but villains, right? Yeah, right. right. Yeah, I, I think the, I think what you got to do with Cody, I think it's got to be a mix of personal issues, very strong personal issues, and cr keeping him as an underdog somehow. If yeah. you can keep that underdog feel, and you know they can't do the Hogan thing, you can't just bring in giants and have giants fight Hogan over, you know, have giants yeah. fight Cody over and over again. But if you create giants out of guys like Randy Orton. 
auto guys, well, you know. Well, you can. Or like you the wrong host. Technically, his boss and can oppress him even right. if he is the champion, right? And, and how, right there. The I think the rock, over, the rock can loom over everything, right? He doesn't have to be there all the time. Cody, Cody can have his feud with Seth or Randy Orton for a while. And then come SummerSlam time, the rock can be like, F this, I'm coming in, you know. So it, yeah, but there's I others. think that. Well, I think The Rock is could be a destination for Cody for SummerSlam. Yeah. A one on one. Because, like, watching last night. So, let's transition that into like what happened last night. Because the, I'm like, wow, the wow. food here is Rock and Cody. Like, yeah. so the, I, you know, in the beginning, when they did the thing, when The Rock comes out and he's got that amazing entrance and they bring back the Hollywood theme and he comes in the ring and they were just milking, they were milking the reactions. The people are cheering Rock like the, like the biggest baby face. And then he just did that thing where he leaned in and he whispered in his ear and he walked away. I was like, oh, that's brilliant because it turned the crowd on him. It turned right. the crowd on the rock completely. And mm -hmm. then bringing him back later on and the beat. Thank God it was raining, first of all. Because the rain added such a oh, it added a, such a good just visual element to the fucking to all of that it was so good, man. Yep, Even the, if breath, you think the, the breath coming out of there, just all of mm -hmm. that stuff. I'm an aesthetic mark for little things like that. Yeah. And it couldn't mm -hmm. have been better. Chicago, the best city for wrestling. Yep. And Co Cody's, you know, Cody's laying in a puddle. The, the, the you know, the shirt was all drenched, and then the yeah. blood. That commitment right there. <laughs> so, yeah. the okay, hey, Marvin, then, can you please explain to everybody why this blood was fine? Yes. Because everyone that's the topic of conversation right now is how can you like this blood and not this blood? It's, okay, it's just I'm gonna let you take so <laughs> it, let's say you only watch WWE, which you know a lot of people obviously do. Um, when's the last time you saw blood? What Brock? Like Brock. when Brock when Brock got hardwayed and or like, like Bronson Reed's nose earlier in the Cody, night. Cody right. bled Cody bled in the bull rope match a okay. few, against Nakamura a few months ago. Okay, well, here's the so. thing. When blood is used sparingly and it's used in a dramatic moment like this, that is when blood takes a, an already, like, you know, interesting story and makes it legendary because now now there's the, the literal life is bleeding out of you while you stare face to face with the final boss okay in the rain up against your bus with a picture of your dog next to you while he talks about your mother like it does not get more personal than that that's why that God. blood worked <laughs> it's not i'm wrestling i'm i'm on a random you know, I'm on a random Wednesday night wrestling a guy who I'm not even in a program with, and I'm going to bleed because I want to drink bones. Like, in front of the camera. Yeah, I'm Mox. Yeah. I'm real cool. I'll take this blade and just carve the only, my head. I'm so tough in front of the camera. <laughs> the only thing that The Rock didn't do was pull his shit out and piss all over Cody. I mean, my goodness, uh -huh. it was it was amazing what what we saw last night. I don't think there's anybody who watched that and came out of that with, and and thought, oh, that was just mid. That was okay. Everybody yeah. loved it. Everybody. Yeah, everyone loved it. And even the AEW freaks who who whatever. Oh, we don't want to our detractors, know. if you will. But the, yeah, we we don't we don't want to you know we don't want to use words like like freaks or whatever. Because I don't I mean, want it to become that kind of thing. Like it's uh, you know yeah, there I mean, are just, there is I'm there is a, I get I get what you're saying. I know what you're saying. <laughs> and people, I know. I'm rolling, bro. We're all good. Um, but no, I'm just saying. Like I, I saw. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just saying WWE fans call say like I'm a WWE freak. Like that's that's not yeah. Me. Okay, that yeah, no, I understand. Yeah, I mean, dude, I get I get called fucking drone pussy every day. Like uh, I yeah, mean, I know. you got it. Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, though, so AEW fans like myself, huge. I was wearing an orange Cassidy shirt on the other show. What? Marv was in disbelief. Yeah, Marv was like, what the fuck? And that's what I'm saying. So, like, uh, I'm not a hater, guys. Okay, that's it's just my way of joking. By the way, by the way, guys, I see the super chats coming in. We are getting to them. I promise. I just I, I, yeah, I don't yeah. want to cut off. Uh, you know, we we will. If you send in a super chat, it's guaranteed we're going to talk about it. So don't worry. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead, Phil. Yeah. Uh, so I, I don't know. Just I saw a lot of them going like, oh, this was the most AEW thing they've done ever. I've seen tweets like that and and saying like, oh, why isn't the AEW blood good? And I don't know. Just saying it's fucking. Because it's like, too much. When there's no, Exactly. Like if you have people blatantly a, a blading car. on camera, blading from dives, uh, bleeding hard way from like fucking shit going awry people I, flying through glass it means nothing in wwe i don't know man this was just I, such a big moment and um yeah dude my girlfriend was like aghast she's like oh is that real and i was like yeah dude he's fucking leaking and that is that's the, the thing I, I, at first that's how you I, draw people in dude that's it was i a was moment. sitting there and i was like did he gig 
And then I'm looking and I'm like, oh, so I, I was like, please tell me he didn't use fake blood because that, that would no, be the worst yeah. thing ever. But then I looked at it. So I, I used to call fake gigging figging, but then I found out that means something else. So I don't know. <laughs> <it. laughs> uh, <laughs> but the, um, uh, then I saw that it was like still, it was like leaking. Like it was, it was actually flowing. And I was like, all right, mm -hmm. okay. That's unlike the, you know, like the story of the, the Hollywood writer that went up to JBL and was like, how do you get the fake blood to keep coming out like that? <laughs> how do you get <laughs> Jesus well, he's got a rose like, forehead. He's going to bleed. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, and, you know, mixing with the blonde hair and all that. It was spot on. Amazing. It's perfect. So um, yeah, it was. And just, again, the rain and the ripped shirt and his mother and the weight belt. I, I mean, I think it was. Um, I think it was Cena Neckbeard. And, and Stone Cold on the truck in the background. I don't know. Right. I don't remember. Who, I don't remember if it was Neckbeard or if it was awful who said Rock is going to have some kind of Hollywood Hogan type. Um Oh yeah, yeah, that was neckbeard. Yeah, yeah that was neckbeard. Neckbeard, yeah, neckbeard. Like with the um, lightning bolt on, like the long. Can you imagine rocking long tights? I think I would actually like dig that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Cody was going to go into the drink last night. I thought I Rock too. was just going to just throw him right over that wall. I did too. I thought they were going to do some big spectacle, like when Hogan hit Rock in the car with the with the semi. Uh, right. But I think you also like. Did anyone else also notice that like looking over the Rock's heinous actions <laughs> was a giant picture of John Cena and Stone Cold Steve Austin? <laughs> like, right. Yeah. His two yeah. arch nemeses yeah. were like, were like, <laughs> come on now, Dwayne. What well, right. the right. hell, kid? Right. What are you doing? And then the rumors are that they're reaching out to both of them to get. Yeah, them that's in. that's the oh, rumors. They're, I mean, they're, that's not great. a rumor. They're both in. Would not be surprised. Would not be surprised. I mean, they're doing things like that right now as when like you'll see two wrestlers up in the forefront and in the background, you'll see Paul Heyman and, and you know, uh, who, who was the gentleman who, we, who was with. But yeah, like they're doing things like that. Easter eggs all over the show. Yeah, and that was a good. That was an awesome, by the way, I, I think people gloss over that but that little touch that drew came out to attack seth and Heyman put him up to it to keep seth away from cody so rock could do what he was going to do that right that just that that little touch right there mm -hmm. you can't look over that stuff triple h is just he's got it man you yeah. know yeah. And oh no i'll just give everyone more time and drink some soda waters and just let them go long <laughs> on time and let them just freestyle everything oh no we'll it's okay great. i gave i gave you more time yeah no i gave you more time don't worry about it let's go all right let's, go. <laughs> let's, let's, move on. let's move on some more super so john thank you 999 says, just wanted to support the show y'all bring level-headed takes to wrestling that's needed hope we get to see juice robinson soon also i hope swerve versus Takeshita because apparently that is how you say that word i've been told uh tomorrow isn't a spot Fest. In my in, in the headlock headlines, I said uh, Takashita, <laughs> and somebody was like, "Somebody's like, are you are, are you doing that on purpose?" And I was like, "Yes, that's the don't joke say that I don't say take a shitta because no, I did not say that. If you say that, you're racist unless you're MJF, and then it's funny. But yeah, anyone else who says that right, is racist, right. <laughs> yeah. And that was even the joke I was making. I I literally thought it was pronounced Takashita. Um, but yes, yeah, so yes, yeah, hoping it's not a spot. Fest. I mean, Swerve, I don't think Swerve is in a spot fest guy, right? Swerve is, um, um yes, he is. I think so. He can be, yeah, awful, awful. Awful. What do you got? Yeah, I think he is. Um, I mean, I think the last few matches he's had, they haven't even had a lockup with, yeah. you know, Swerve is a, wow, I was about to say the word spot, you know, <laughs> but yeah, he, it's and okay, that, wouldn't, that would that yeah. would yeah no not not with not with swerve <laughs> yeah. no 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 but, don't do that but um yeah listen swerve he's not interesting enough um he keeps putting he, he keeps getting put on the back burner the last time we saw swerve he was supposed to go against Samoa Joe and somehow ended up going against Takashita this like it doesn't yeah, make any sense over there Takashita I'm so sorry <laughs> swerve is Sw swerve is one of those guys that you know can work right he's one of those guys yeah. that you know he knows how to tell a story he knows the psychology but it seems like I'd like also, to read it he also like he seems like he knows the audience he's working in front of too you know and um i don't know he's i see so much potential in him and i don't want to turn i don't want this to become like a oh, terrible booking in aw but man he no. just seems like he could be used but, so but much terrible better booking because because i love both these guys <laughs> but but when you see this matchup it it's you're not looking forward to the to the matchup so much as you're dreading that now what? swerve is going to be stuck with the don Callis family for the swerve next year instead him. of instead of in the title picture Swerve should have beat MJF. Swerve should be the champion right now. 
Now, you coming, know what? I'm, coming off of I'm, Page, coming off of Hangman, he had so much momentum. They should have given him the title right then. I'm and gonna, I, I, I love I, Joe I, as the champion. I love. I, him I was about to say, I'm going to counter you there because I think Samoa Joe is a fantastic world champion. It's I do too, crazy. but I just yeah. think if you were ever going to do it on, if you were ever going to pull the tr- trigger on Swerve, that was the time. And then a, you know, if you want to do Joe later, I don't know. It's oh, it's so last tough month would have been fine. Such a big stacked roster. It's like who do you who do you? Well, push and I wouldn't want to see Joe be like a transitional champion. You know, yeah. like I I would want um I, I definitely would want a lot out of a Samoa Joe title, and that's and that's speaking from me as an old school Ring of Honor fan, like from the early two thousands, because I used to I loved Samoa Joe's like insanely long title reign there and all the matches that he mm-hmm. had there. The mm-hmm. it, it was just you know it's it's tremendous it was tremendous, and he is bringing that same level. Of, of what it means to be a strong world's champion to AEW. And I think it's a highlight of the show. Like I always make it a point to try to catch whatever promo Joe did, or, you know, I, I mean, look, say what you will about the match with hook. Did he give him too much? Probably, but you know what? It was a good match. And he put the that kid on the map. Yeah. I think it, I think the match was good. I thought that him and Wardlow was good. Everybody was like, no, they buried Wardlow. And I was like, you can't bury what's already underground. <laughs> so, you know, like I was like, right. well, Wardlow was sent out there to make Joe look good. And he did. And you know, that that's kind of, just how I've always looked at it. I think Joe, Wardlow's name to Morlock. Yeah, pretty much. Right. I, you know what? And I watched Joe as champion in AEW. I'm like, man, what could have been like, if he had like stayed healthy in WWE or like, I don't know, like Vin- Vince, I don't think ever understood Samoa Joe, obviously, Um, you know, cause you know, Kevin Owens is, is lucky oh, enough related that- to the rock. You're <laughs> yeah. Ah. yeah. He's the only Samoan in the world. That's not somehow related to the Annalee family. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, but I, I think that I think Tony's got something with Joe, and I think that he can really make Joe a big fight champion if it's done if it's done right. And as of right now, I don't really have a lot of complaints about the way he's using Joe. I think that Joe looks strong. I think that Joe's promos have been spot on, and I think that Joe brings brings something to that belt. If that makes sense, hitch the wagon to Joe for the next year. If Tony Khan is smart, he would definitely hold on, have Joe hold on to that belt for a long time and build some opponents up for him in a proper way. You know who I would really love to see them build up? And you're going to hear this on this podcast a lot, this name come up, because this is somebody who I love so much. Jay Lethal. Like, lethal, lethal Lethal was Joe's protege in Ring of Honor. And that, that was always the thing. Lethal was Joe's protege. There's history there, especially because you own Ring of Honor and you own that footage. So you can actually like tell that story with the footage instead of just having people Google it. You know, I, I think that if you ever want to really push Jay, like he, Jay is a guy that can do it all. Jay has the look. Jay has the swagger. Jay has the Jay can talk. Jay can work. Like, I mean, the guy is ludicrously talented. And I, it's just, it's, I feel that he's the, I get so frustrated that he doesn't do much more with him than just kind of put him with Jarrett and, you I'm know, whatever they he, have him doing. Inside Okada, Osprey, Jay White, and this, the, you know, this line of, of superstars to put a, a major title on Jay Lethal. I agree. I agree. And I, I don't, I don't think that they're going to, to put Jay Lethal in the main event spot i just wish that they would i wish somebody would have i I wish that in uh you know tna came kind of close with you know at the very least put jay on ring of honor make him ring of honor champion like he's the he is like the one of the most decorated ring of honor champions of all time maybe that would bring some old school ring of honor fans back to your product if you put jay on ring of honor but still Hmm. keep him on the regular shows they're they're already watching watching what they're gonna no one's paying 12.99 a month to watch that shit right right Desire Death, ten dollars. Thank you so much. Love Desire Death. He, he's a great guy. Thank you, uh, sir. I, I got two things. Do you think with the move to Netflix, we might see a more PG thirteen or PG fourteen style content? Also, what about the Meltzer? It doesn't make logical sense, but it makes booking sense. Quote. Uh, All right, two two very different things here. So we'll tackle one after the other. Uh, the uh, I do not think there is a chance in hell we go PG thirteen, PG fourteen. I don't. I think there's. I think that uh, WWE's deal with Mattel is kind of rooted in the PG era. And that is a big, big money deal for toys. And I think that they just, they realized that if they presented a more family friendly product, they're able to get more sponsorships. You're getting, you can have Burger King toys, you know, like happy meal toys and, and, and things like that. Even you appeal to that younger audience. Also, you know, I, I don't know. It is, it is, is it possible that the kids that they were trying to appeal to, with Cena, when they made the move, they're going to age the product with those kids. 
like the way they aged it with us into the Attitude Era? Maybe, you know, stranger things have happened. They seem to be getting a little bit more of an edge. Um, you know, not not Adam Copeland, but uh, not a Christian either. But the I don't know. I don't see them going full on like PG 14, like to the point where we're getting that. I also don't think that this world that we live in is, is, uh, has enough, um, you know, can handle it. I, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I don't think that they're going to, I think that every week there will be some new outrage. There were new outrages this week, you know? I think, and, and- I think, I think, uh, you could do that type of stuff on pay per view. Uh, the Raws and the SmackDowns and the NXTs. Yeah, you want to keep that PG. But po- yeah, but the point about Netflix is you can do whatever you want on Netflix. Yeah. Right. So take the risk. Why not? That's they're what good. I think. Yeah. But then what are you going to have Raw be TV 14, but then SmackDown's PG? Like, I, yes, I think you got to go what, one or the other. Yeah, that's what I believe they're going to do. So SmackDown's yeah, going to remain PG, and I think it's going to actually, because they don't have a great relationship with Fox, I think it's going to move over to USA. And that's I think why that was a confirmed, lot of- wasn't it? That, that's yeah. Well, a lot of people are thing. confused. They're like, why isn't USA, like, why are they just allowing them to just swear and get away with all this shit if they're just leaving the network? Well, because mm-hmm. I believe SmackDown's going to move to USA, remain PG, and then uh, Raw is going to go to Netflix where you see the more mature stuff like that. I, mean, I don't I know. Think, I, I, I think I, the I, SmackDown will convert to what we're seeing on Raw now, which yes, it gets a little yeah. racier as, as it gets later in the night. Uh-huh. And I think Netflix will like the product the way it is now. But I think Netflix will let them do whatever gets the most views. When, yeah, you can when, push it. Don't got to, but you can if you want on Netflix, yeah, right? right? That's the beauty of it. So it's, yeah, I think that's the perfect move too. I think it makes sense. I think SmackDown appeals to more families too. I think it gets higher ratings and there's more kids watching it because they're home, like younger kids, you know, yeah. anyways, because it's, and I don't know if they move, like SmackDown could move from Friday. It's jumped around a bunch of nights. Um, so I don't know. Do you guys think, I want to ask you guys this. Do you think they'll move? uh raw from monday or do you think they give a fuck like you just drop it on it's netflix so you just watch it when you watch it um Mm. they've already said it's gonna be on monday i think they want people to go to netflix live but they'll be plenty happy if they get you know another million people to watch during the course of the week or more has netflix ever done has netflix ever done live tv before i've never not like this no not like this not weekly fucking this is the setting the precedent wwe on the forefront once again of the every everything when it comes to sports and entertainment it's uh you know you know yeah i don't know they have have had some live events they have the capacity to do it but they're they're working on building that infrastructure now but remember they have they've got a, a year to do it Mm-hmm. The um, I remember years ago I was a stockholder and I went to the stockholders meeting one year. I traveled all I traveled over to to Stanford for it, and I remember it was like and we're talking like this was like 2007, right? Like we we are not like anywhere near the age of streaming yet. And Vince was up there and he was talking and he said eventually our entire product is going to be right here. And he held up his cell phone. It was a BlackBerry at the time, I think. And I remember looking at him and going, yeah, right, old man. I don't, I don't think so. And then, like, you know, remember when he was like, oh, I think the website sucks. And, and they did, like, a whole thing about that. Right. He was so, fu- like, and look, I'm not, this is not a personal endorsement of Vince McMahon. This is just, I'm talking business here, all right? He was so far ahead of the game when it came to trends in television that that he knew streaming was coming. He yeah. he knew it was he knew it was on the way. He had this he had the vision like and when when they made the WWE network, um, when they made the WWE network, they uh, I finally looked at it and I remember I called my friend and because I remember when he said he, the website sucked, we were like, what else does he want the website to do? And then like years later, when the WWE network called uh, launched, I called my friend and I'm like that that's what he wanted to do right and you know he was just a bit but it's funny because he's also a guy that thought like like ah, oh, you know it'll get roman over i'll get it he's got to appeal to the kids with what they like those looney tunes yeah Suffering, suck attack. Suck attack. vince has always been bold and fate favors the bold but not all of his things have worked but more have worked than not and sometimes they've tripped to success you know falling forward but uh you know uh, business wise you're right he was ahead of the game but they also knew when to stop the the network and go to the yeah. and and license it out to to peacock so well, you know they haven't yeah, they, been they, they re- make decisions they realized that they can make a buttload of money and and do much much less work than they were doing like managing the streaming service managing the oh, servers sure. and all that other stuff so i mean it was so um the, the next question he has is what about the melts it doesn't make logical sense but it makes booking sense quote so i actually have this this quote 
uh, queued up so that we can actually like, you know, understand what, what's going on. And uh, th- for those of you that watched uh, me and Phil on Phil's uh, podcast, you know, pro you've already Times, seen, maybe. You, you've already, you've yeah, on pro wrestle times. You've already seen us uh, discuss it, but you're going to see us discuss. Yeah. It we need the Harry Potter flute music. We're doing my bit over here. We yeah, got right. Play, no, no, no. Tee it up, Marv. Do this. I, I love this. I'm salivating. I love, I'll rip on Meltzer day and night, dude. It's yeah. one of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to share that. Okay. So everyone can see what Let's I'm seeing go. now. Oh All yes. Right, here, yep. here we go. Meltzer said what? One of my favorite. Uh, not not Meltzer said what? Yeah, it's originally from Meltzer said what? But Why Triple H thoughts is the, the one uh, doing. Okay, so here we go. Um, no, shut up. Obviously, I don't, they weren't booked. Why? Why did they win that match at the paper? So just so you guys know, they're talking about the fact that. FTR is in the tag title tournament, but the Blackpool Combat Club is not. And the Blackpool Combat Club defeated FTR, and there's supposed to be wins and losses matter here. All right, back back to it. Title tournament. Perhaps because whoever wins the tag team tournament, that's going to be the next program. Ugh. That actually makes <laughs> sense. No, it doesn't. Yes, kudos to brian alvarez okay <laughs> kudos to you i can't yeah. believe i'm saying those words kudos to you brian alvarez that ma- that, that, that makes sense and no it doesn't <laughs> i love it. He's just like, no it doesn't <laughs> like when, when did he grow a pair <laughs> like it just start challenging dave to things i think he's his own brand now and he's like i don't need you anymore old man mm. um, and he knows that dave's a sinking ship so oh, i'm gonna go back a couple seconds <laughs> gonna be the, the next program that actually makes total booking sense no, it doesn't. Yes, it does, bro. They beat I know FTR. Saying, I, know, I know, I know. They I know, beat I know. them clean okay. in the middle of the ring, and FTR is okay, in the you're... tournament, and they're not. Okay, that's, that's so that totally doesn't different. make sense. No, 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 no. It doesn't make logical sense, but it makes well, book- yes, of course. But it, but it makes it makes wrestling booking sense in the sense that you have this team and you don't want to beat them in the tournament. Uh, what? It, the, 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 what the, the, you know what? I finally understand how he gets the, the his arms as big as they are because uh, he just stretches the truth and jumps to conclusions yeah. for his work. Uh, like, come on, man. Can I, can I oh take my. a stab at trying to explain his logic? Please do, because if you okay. can find logic in that nonsense, then, then more power to you. Okay. He's going off of this myth that we've been told for years that AEW is sports-based wrestling. And he's he's not talking about booking as in booking a story. He's talking booking as in saving them for their like their wins and losses and their records and all that. Uh-huh. It's it's complete BS. It means <laughs> nothing and it's yeah. all just in their head. Uh-huh. But in his world it makes total sense to do right. This. Okay. You know, because he's looking at it as like, well, you don't want to see them in the tournament and then they'll lose. Group. He's ridiculous, but <laughs> well, it, only, it only makes sense. If FTR is going to win the tournament, then it, it, it only makes it sense. Makes- if it's real, that's the only way this makes sense. Yeah, dude. It's, it's just Tony doesn't even believe in the rankings and all that shit. So it's just no. Dave is just doing. He's just well, m- coming gone. up with his own storyline and his. Uh, hold, hold on, guys. Uh, WWF counselor yeah. has just arrived, so I'm going to invite him into this guy. Counselor, how are you doing, my friend? Are you here and present? I hear breathing. Oh yeah. Well, he'll be here hold right on, away. Hold on. Hold on. I'm trying to get. I because I see I see one dude with his camera up, so I want to. I wanted to get my camera going too, so give me one second. All right, man, go well, do whatever that's you okay. guys. Yeah, well, that's okay. Well, gave you more time. It's awesome. Uh, yeah. So, water water. no, I, I I completely understand what you're saying, Dis. I um, yeah, I just it is just so, it is you know. By the it's way, stretching the of, stretching the truth and jumping to conclusions that was I can't take credit for that. That was a Jerry Lawler line that I shamelessly just stole. It's completely counterproductive to what wrestling is supposed to be. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. And making does, money. Does, Exactly. You it's that it's the beauty of wrestling is that it's not real. The beauty of wrestling is that you don't have to <laughs> think about random consequences and weird things. You can book it, you can book every night to be game seven of the World Series. You can do that. So to add in these like little stupid things like this because you want to pretend it's real is such mark bullshit. You know, I'm uh, sorry, <laughs> but it really no, it's is. all right. It's all right. You Counselor, know, my and, friend. Counselor, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm glad to be on here. I'm sorry, you know, coming on an hour, hour late, but you know, 
Hey, you know what? That's the, the yeah. think of this as the break room. You come, you go, you, you do it. I mean, awful's gone out in and out, and the neckbeards is in and out. So, you know, the yeah, uh, you know, yeah. we're, we're all everybody but me can go in and out at will. I'm the one that has to stay be throughout, throughout, throughout the night tonight, I think. But I just wanted to pop in because I see I saw that. Um, I'm sorry, what was the clip that you were just playing again? It was, about? it was, it was Meltzer. It was Meltzer saying that, like, the fact that. Um, you know, FTR is in um the tag title tournament, but Blackpool oh, yes, Comic yes, Club yes, isn't. I remember now. I remember now. So, so, so you know, it's it's interesting to me that he continuously tries to justify um this poor booking from AEW. That doesn't make any logical sense, right? Because you would think that um since since the plumber. And um, the guy who, <laughs> <laughs> and the guy who's best known for for losing to Roman Reigns, right? Mm -hmm. um, as well, teaming um, to be uh, a guy who has a gun charge and another guy who's bald. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that, yeah. You you would think you would think they would they would be the tournament and kind of like sweeping on through, right? First of all, you know, I, I do have to say, too, it's very tiring, and I'm very surprised that, you know, the EW fan base doesn't really speak up about this because I think it's very poor booking and very lazy as well in terms of storylines and things like that to always be doing this terminates. Always. Right. Mm. Uh, I, yeah, it, the last thing we needed was another tournament. It's kind of become yeah, a meme at this point yeah. that like everything but, is a tournament. All tournaments but, wrestling, but, but it's, you know what? Yeah. You know what though? Look at this mess of a six man or six team ladder match that they're doing. Yeah, so you have to have bar grab. Like it, it, tournaments are just overdone in wrestling. Well, wrestling right now, period. Yeah, yeah don't you get know. me wrong. You know, um. I, I think the biggest problem with WWE is um, the tag team uh, wrestling. And it's hard to go from last year's WrestleMania where you had the Usos and um, Sami Zayn. And I get what you're saying. Yeah. The, the yes. last year, the last year, the tag titles was such a major point in, in, you know, yeah. in WrestleMania, it was the main event of night one of WrestleMania. And now this year, we're kind of back to where we were before, where it's like, okay, this is our excuse to get, you know, 12 guys on WrestleMania yeah. in one this match. Is great. Which is great. Hopefully they are, you know, getting the traditional WrestleMania pay. Like, I'm very excited that um, the Street Pops are in it. Um, you know, I think about, in general, you know, I'm going to be honest here, and I said this before many times on, on X, but a uh, certain, you know, a certain faction on X doesn't believe that uh, I provide any criticism to WWE. It's all right. We know you do. But I'll, I'll say this, yeah, you know. Man. We all get that shit. I think I think Hunter does a very poor job with uh, booking black people. And, you know, when I think about, for example, um, how much he floundered um, the Street Poppets and, and Bobby Lashley, it's like a no brainer. Like that's they should have been fired. They should have been fired on all cylinders, you know. Um, and then to be, you know, in this meaningless feud with, um, oh my gosh, with um, Final Testament. Yes, Final Testament. Exactly. Thank you. It, it's it's just so forgettable that I don't even remember. Right. Right. Because mm -hmm. it's Agreed. it's you know it's like come on, what do you, what is it that you're doing there? Because when I watched the the um, the Bianca Montez show, um, it felt, I haven't watched that yet. I, I, it's, I, gotta, it's, I gotta... really it's really good. Although you know, I think I think Montez comes comes across as um, egotistical, um, which I I can see. It's hard because I think it's you know with with black men in general, more particularly mm. in media. Um, we get, you know, scrutinized in a way that if we want more for ourselves and whatnot, then it's shamed upon versus upon uh, other groups. So, you know, for even before that, you know, I, I understood where Montez was coming from in the sense of he's definitely the breakout star. You know, we think about Angelo Dawkins, you know, he just kind of like, all right, I kind of just accept whatever, whatever is coming my way. 
And when you think about it, he's been a development development uh, developmental developmental. For a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, may I? May I? And please, yes, hold please. On, hold on, hold on. Hold, uh, no, hold on, hold on. Awful, you have the floor. And then Montez, you know. Awful, you have the floor. I just want to say that what happens when when I think I said it before. You've got to fight and kick and scream and hoot and holler to get your spot. That has never changed in wrestling. To single out uh, black people or Asian people or even white people, because there are plenty of uh, you know white guys who are who are sitting on the back burner right now. You've got to scratch and claw and kick to make things happen in that company. Period. Point blank. Doesn't matter whether you're black, white, or candy stripe. That's all I got to say. I. I, I, I definitely I definitely see both your points there. I, I, I definitely see oh. yeah, I, yeah, you know you're on. I definitely see both your points. Um yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's a it's a I don't know, it's a it's a loaded topic. It's a loaded topic that I that I think we could dedicate a whole lot of time to. Yeah, I, I totally I totally get it for sure. Uh I do think Montez really uh fights his ass off for the spot. Um, how about backstage though? Uh, okay, that's fair. <laughs> you know? we, don't, we don't know what's happening backstage. That's correct. But when you it know? comes to like you know his performance in the ring, his promos, mm-hmm. um, how he was on the actual Hulu show itself, it's mm-hmm. like man, like this guy's a star. Why the fuck are you not promoting him? You know you what? Know? Everything yeah, except promos. In promos, he comes off like a muscular dork. I'm sorry. He just uh, he right. doesn't come off as he doesn't come off. He should come <laughs> off as cool. He has everything going for him. But when All he right. speaks, I'm just like, shut up. I uh-huh. have the answer about Montez Ford, and here Go it for is. This. Okay, because I uh, I right after they turned him heel, I went to a house show in Springfield, Missouri, like you know, tiny house show, and he cut a heel promo. He did his best job to get that crowd to turn on him, and he was awful awful mm. like it was it was, it, it was he okay it, it's like he went and read a wikipedia page for springfield and just went to the famous person section and decided i'm just gonna say i hate every single person listed in this section and he was he, he started like bad mouthing brad pitt <clears throat> like wow. anybody in springfield missouri gives a crap that brad pitt was born there and then moved right. two months later like he he didn't he just doesn't in WWE. You need to be able to do both because you need to be able to be a piece that they can move as needed. And, right. and, and Montez yeah. he just doesn't have that. He doesn't have that in him. He can't, mm-hmm. if that was because at those house shows, that's where you get to see these guys going off script, being what they can be showing the crowd, what they can do. And if that's what he was allowed, if that was what he was, he could do when allowed to do whatever he wanted to do, he do, he can't be a heel. And right. I don't think that I don't think until he shows that he can, I don't think they're going to be willing to push him more than uh, mid Carter or a tag team. Wrestler. I totally, and, you know, I totally get wrestle- that. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. The wrestling soup had a good point. Also, he says people can, can't be at the top all the time just because it's storylines. It's ebb and flow. It's got to make sense, and, and, you know, based on the story that we're telling. And I think there's a lot of logic to that. I, I think that, you know, I, I think that what we're seeing right now is, you know, I think, it, you know, Lashley has been booked very strong. Kofi has been booked very strong. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the New Day as a whole have been booked very strong. Big E, they 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 had strapped the rocket to Big E, and you, you know, and I think that they will. It, hopefully, he comes back. I really hope he comes back. But you know, Wrestling Soup also just said Montez needs MVP, and I think that would help. I think you know, MVP would help with that. Or Heyman is 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 um is Montez Ford a fan? Because that is a big thing that has been missing in this conversation. Like, are th- are these professional wrestlers, did they grow up as fans? Do they know true psychology? Do they know how to engage with the fans? Do they know how to, to, to talk a good promo? Yeah. Did they practice? All these things, all these intangibles come into play when when we when I look at somebody like Montez Ford or Bianca Belair, you know, or or any one of them. Like, are are they true wrestling fans? You know, um, that's a very good point. I think, I think you know, I hate to say it, right? But like, if you really watch the Hulu show, um, if I did. He was, if he was really paying attention to how he presented himself on the Hulu show, he, there there could be a heel personality there, as you know, 
controversial and stereotypical it might be, um, I I think still leaning into that can help skyrocket. I think I think you know I legitimately think when you look at his build, look at the way he talks, uh, how he presents presents himself, he could definitely be a breakout star. But at the same time, too, you know, I I do agree with uh, DC in the sense of um, what you do in the house shows is very important because that's yeah. what you get the reps in. That's what you get the practice in. So uh, we, we, not- guys, we we got we got to move on. We got to move on. Okay, good. Okay. Um, so we got another super chat here from uh, Shaggy Phil seventy three ten dollars. Thank you so much. He says, "Any anyone awesome. else excited for the Bray doc? Anyone else yes. sad that we never got a chance for Bray versus Cody? I think that could have been the next taker versus Sean." A hundred percent. So I believe that Bray Wyatt is the most brilliant human being, uh, the most brilliant creative mind in the history of wrestling. I, I you know, mm. 100, 100. I, I see, I see everybody, you know, now post mortem who are like, oh my gosh, he was so brilliant. And then like, be, like the day before he died, they were, they were like, Uncle Howdy, this is the worst thing ever. Yep. That man was a genius. He was a creative genius, and he was ahead of his time. And I think this documentary is really going to highlight that. I know that they brought in a lot of the writers who worked with him too to kind of talk about his creative behind the scenes, you know, uh, prowess. And I, and I really think that we're going to get a whole lot of, um, you know, like big feels out of this one. And you know I how, agree. Yeah, you know, how passionate, you know how passionate I am about Bray Wyatt. We that was yeah. that was the thing that we first started talking about. Yeah, Bray. it was like a bonding moment. Yeah, and um, man, like I, I've I've said a hundred times, he viewed wrestling and it saw it could be so much more than what it mm-hmm. is. And his re, his impact isn't going to be felt for 10, 15 years. Um, but uh, you look I, at the, you look at the Firefly Funhouse and you look at the layers of it, right? I mean, like th- this this like you know Im- Im- incredible like dark dark but light and all the puppets being some kind of microcosm of his like personalities and and you know everything he's done through the years. He voiced all of them. And Howdy, he, well, yeah. People don't realize Uncle Howdy. Uncle Howdy, they called. Um, it, it's based on Barry Windham. Yeah. And, right. You know, uh, they used aspects of Barry Windham and uh, everything. In the mask, you could see, yeah, yeah. Everything is just based around his, parts of his personality and the things that made him. Uh-huh. And it, it, like, go watch. I wish they would release a some kind of director's commentary over the Firefly Fun Funhouse. I know Bray can't do it, obviously yeah. now. But, but, yeah, but you can get you can get Nick Manfredi. I mean, you can get like Nick Manfredini, and you can get Alexa. And you can get Cena because like, you know. Cena said that I meant the match itself, and I think Cena said mm-hmm. he had some input in it too. During the yeah for the Firefly Funhouse match, John John Cena was very like involved with like going back and forth with Bray and the writers and like kind of figuring out exactly what they were going to do, where they were going to go. I mean that match is I love that match. That match was three dimensional chess. In I showed I showed my son that match is the first thing I ever showed him with Bray Wyatt in it. And I was pausing it every five seconds to be like, okay, this is what this means. <laughs> <laughs> this is why he's in a show that says a show that says no on it. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, but I love I love Bray Wyatt. I can't wait for that doc. I still haven't watched the SmackDown tribute show because I know I'm gonna cry like a baby. My son hated me that week because we had to miss SmackDown, but I'm like, I'm not watching. I can't do it. I just can't uh-huh. do it, man. I, it, I he's the one that hit me, and it, like I, there was one other wrestler that hit me. I can't remember off the top of my head, but, but Bray's the only one that really got me. You know, so, mm-hmm. yeah, oh, it was yeah. Owen, but that doesn't count because I was at the memorial show. Of course, you're going to cry for at the memorial show. That doesn't count. Hundred <laughs> yeah. percent. Well, yeah. I, I feel I feel kind of outnumbered. Um, I'm not going to say anything negative, but I will say no, that it, Bray didn't. Hit, if, if it was, yeah, didn't, Bray didn't, didn't click you. That's fine. Yeah, it didn't click for me, <laughs> and I hope that's fine. Um, Bray was a great talent. Um, I'm never going to discount what he brought to the table. Uh, the, the, the idea that he was a genius, I, I just think differently. I think, um, because of his presentation, because of Mr. McMahon presenting him in such a way where it was just like so different. And remember, you know, he, I just didn't feel like he, he was, um, engaging to me, uh, I'm glad that you guys thought that he was that that's awesome because it it lends me new light to to understanding. But personally, I didn't I didn't feel Bray Wyatt as a character was all that interesting to me. I thought it was like so far afield from what we what we were seeing on television. 
and you, you 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 could be right. I could probably change my whistle in the next five years. You know, after seeing this documentary, I'm going to give it a chance. But I, I, me personally, I didn't. I didn't. You know, I wasn't. It should be it. the whole. It should. Yeah, you know, Bray stuff shouldn't be the whole show, but. I think it should be in the show. I think there should be something uh, like that in wrestling. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah, right. Right. You know, just like you had the Undertaker for years, and like you know, uh, Counselor, what were you gonna say? Uh, no, I was just gonna say, you know, I'm excited for it. I I always thought Bray Wyatt was a genius. You know, when I think about his match with John Cena and his match with uh, Braun Strowman as well, uh, um, it it really encapsulated what wrestling was all about when i think about in general that pandemic era it really yeah. showed you who were who the real wrestlers were right because at the end of the day i think people forget about that wrestlers are supposed to be performers they're supposed to be actors they you know for me is if you can carry a room right if you can carry a room when no one's around and be able to get people to feel like like drew mcintyre did when he went to wrestlemania for example with no crowd at all, um, making people feel uh, and making people think is very important in this business. So Randy Orton was also another example during the pandemic as well. So, you know, the Bray Wyatt uh, documentary, I think is really going to show, you know, just the behind the scenes of the genius and whatnot. You know, yeah. I think it's very interesting. And I think very it's interesting what you said there about the... Um... And, point really quick. and I, I think it's um, also very interesting when we think about the Wrestling Observer Awards, how he um, got worst gimmick for two, three years in a row. Um, it's kind of very telling with, you know, how people think about what pro wrestling is, at least on the internet in general, versus when we think about the merch, uh, how, you know, how much Bray Riot was this hot merch seller, for example, um, and the kind of views he was getting for the stuff he was doing. Bray was yeah. a genius. Uh, Bray was like, you know, the show How I Met Your Mother. Sometimes they were duds, but when it was funny, it was hysterical. When they yes. when they got it right, they got it right. And that mm -hmm. was Bray. And he gave us more right than wrong. And he tried. He was creative. He was trying to bring a horror movie and a psychological thriller on an ongoing basis on a week to week. And, you know, it was the closest thing was the Broken Hardy universe. That only worked for two years. Uh, I, I just think that Bray was remarkable. And that one... I don't like to compare people's deaths, but that wrestler death hit me the hardest, at least as an adult. That I mean, was a big, that, that one hit me too. That it was such a yeah. shock. I remember it was just kind of took the wind out of me. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, Bray versus Cody. I think that could have been money, especially oh, like yeah. fiend fiend versus Cody. I would have loved fiend versus cause fiend was a mon fiend was a literal monster. Like once they learned how to use the fiend, the fiend was my favorite thing on the show. Like it what? didn't work when, like when you know when they did the the disqualification in the Hell in a Cell match. I was like, come on! But you know, <laughs> they the or where they would like try to keep like the cane light on for the entire match. I was like, no, it doesn't work, guys. Like turn the lights on. But yeah, the you, the way the they, high school hunk versus the the monster. I mean, it's perfect. The um the the way the fiend um the the way the fiend was presented later on. I I think versus Cody that would have been money. Um, all right, let's let's move on. Um, JPS uh, coming in with uh, five dollars. He says, "I'm glad I caught the stream." Uh, besides Cafe De Renee, this is becoming my favorite growing wrestling channel on the YouTube's. Also, Screw Mounts, thank you, <laughs> thank you very awesome. much. Um, you know the awesome. uh, and and I appreciate the fact that you are a fellow Spectre with your N7 logo on there. Uh, you know, do well, Commander. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, Mass Effect is one of my favorite games of all time. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, oh, our friend Alyssa chiming in. Alyssa, you did not have to send us money, Come on. <laughs> but she did anyway. Yes, she like, did. Uh, she did. So she says, just <laughs> tuning in now. Anyone want to fill me in on the discussion so far? No, 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 <laughs> we're not going to sit here and recount the episode for you, Alyssa. My goodness, now, Alyssa's our friend, guys. We like have more zeros. Her. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> I had more zeros. Colin Taylor, $20. Thank you so much, man. Awesome, hello, man. From, hello from Iwakuni, Japan. I hope I said that right and I didn't just do a racism. Iwakuni. Uh, yeah, he said, uh, just yes, got I my say. son into wrestling. He's really loving the Miz on <laughs> Truth Spots. Do you think they will continue after XL? I think Triple H sees dollar signs around our Truth the way Vince never did. Yeah. Can I take? I told him I'd go into this a little bit because my yeah, yeah, loves, go for it. He loves our Truth and the Miz. He even has, by the way, I, I was thinking about doing a video of this, but I don't want to plaster his face. He he can do Miz's entrance 
<laughs> all the way down and sing the song from beginning to end. Like, I don't That's know so why cool. he's obsessed with the Miz, but he loves the Miz for some reason. But, um, I, I, you gotta keep Archer. They book, they book Archer so much better than Vince did. I was so sick of our truth when Vince was booking them with the 24 seven title stuff. I was with, yeah, you it was just so it's, it just felt like such an afterthought and having him, how he's, he's, he's almost like becoming the heart of raw, right? Like, it's so weird because you're taking this goofy character and you're turning him to somebody you actually care about and you actually want to see do well. Like there was a moment uh, when Seth got injured and we didn't know if he was going to be good for mania that I, that I was really pushing, man, they should let truth win the title in the rumble and then have, and then have Damian priest cash. Uh-huh. In yeah. But just to give truth a moment, truth. Truth oh, could you imagine, moment, man? Could you? Yeah, no, he really does. I, I think I think truth <laughs> Alyssa says bullying me, shaking my head. Uh, <laughs> I, I think that here's the thing about truth in the way he was booked with Vince. OK. I, and I'm saying this as somebody who writes comedy now on a weekly basis. It, if you are not funny, you cannot write comedy. And Vince McMahon is not funny. I'm sorry. Oh, like, come on, he, pal. I'm he, hilarious. He never he <laughs> never <laughs> succeeded. He, <laughs> he never succeeded in writing comedy. And you haven't know, you read my text? They were just jokes, I swear. <laughs> God. The um honestly, like for me, like going into this, I was like, oh God, I'm not funny. I can't write comedy. But it's it is very it's the most difficult thing to do. And you need a mm-hmm. performer. It certainly is. You 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 need a performer who needs um uh what do you what do you call it um ah i just completely lost my range this happens to me sometimes yes you a performer with range and our truth has range i mean he was you know former in this is a former end this is the first ever you know african-american nwa heavyweight champion i mean yeah. like yeah uh, man this, and he's a great, awesome it's, truth it's, oh, sorry, a great, it's a great One spot thing. for miz too I it's a great spot. hold on hold on disc go ahead it's a great spot for miz too it keeps him like you don't have to push him too hard. You can keep him hanging around our truth. He's a good, he like him and truth work good together. You can tell they have chemistry. It, he does. It's it's like, he's, he's on the card, but he's not taking up a spot. You so know, they're winning and, the straps at mania. Awesome. Truth. That's yes. what you guys think. Or what? Yes. I, I wouldn't hate it. Okay. I think truth is, is somebody you can, you can take around uh, and put him on local, local news shows. Yeah, you can put him on. I mean, uh, if you want, you can put him on the Tonight Show. That's the type of exactly. That's the type of thing that you want with almost all of your wrestlers. The fact that they are able to bleed into mainstream audiences and really bring them in to watch your product. You could do a reality show with them on Netflix. I mean, we were just rightly, you know, uh, you know talking about Barry Wyatt as a genius. I think our truth is a genius also. He's, it's a different type of genius. It's a different kind of creator. He's managed to make this this goofy character stay fresh all the time because he's clever. He's truly funny. He comes up with yeah. Funny he stuff. makes good music too. His timing, is everything was funny. I mean, it's funny stuff. By the way, it's something that I don't think a lot of people realize. Our truth is fifty-two years old, yeah, yeah. Dude. and he looks like that. he's twenty-three. I mean, good lord, he'll and never, he, he'll never age. And never. he can't be a serious wrestler and cut a great promo. Go watch his and go watch his stuff while he was in WA Champion. His, he was fantastic, edgy, yeah. yeah, edgy, and and you believed him. You know, he's got range. Oh, mm-hmm. but this is what he's best at, obviously. Yeah, I know. I I mean, look, do I think that, you know, a comedy act is ever going to be in, like the main event at WrestleMania? No, I don't. But I, I think that he could have a real strong IC championship reign. I think that I, I, I mean, there was a period recently where he was the number one merch seller in the company. That's the thing that <laughs> see, that's the kind of thing they take notice of. It's not so much. It's not Meltzer stars and all this other crap. It's how much money are you making me? And our truth was the number one outsold Cody, outsold Roman, outsold, you know, uh, Rhea, outsold, um, you know, Bianca, all of these big heavy hitters, the biggest stars in wrestling. And our truth sold the most merchandise. That Listen, is telling about how he's being used. The only time was in Four there seven title was remotely interesting. And the only time Dana Brooke was remotely charming was when they were both paired with Archer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Counselor he, he, awful. Do you guys mind that I use the term black don't crack in the chat when referring to our truth? <laughs> no problem. <laughs> you right? Just the truth, brother. <laughs> you just did. <laughs> so you, <laughs> I can moderate myself if you want to be. You know, you know who's you know who said that to me one time was um I met Walter Jones, uh Zach, the original um Black Ranger from uh, Power Rangers. 
And I was like, dude, you look like he looked exactly the way he looked on the show. I was like, you don't age. And he was like, and he said it. And I was just like, oh, okay. brought it up in chat. Ernie Hudson. I just wouldn't saw that new Ghostbusters movie. Oh, he, man, looks, yeah, he, he has he gray still... hair, but he looks exactly the same as he did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. Uh, so, yeah, I, I honestly think Miz and Truth will take the belts at WrestleMania. I think, honestly, they're going to use this as an opportunity to split the tag titles, to dispute them, to have one for each show. I think that, like, maybe Judgment Day gets one pair and our truth gets the other pair and, you know, thinks that he's part of the Judgment Day because of that or something like that. I don't know. Something to keep the hilarity going with him. But I, I think that they're going to use it to dispute the tag belts again. Like, can you imagine, like, getting up to the top of that ladder and being like, oh, my God, I got to take down, like, eight belts. <laughs> you know one thing that uh i really enjoyed about our truth he a while ago i can't remember when this was he did an interview where he talked about uh the little jimmy thing right and how that was supposed to be a punishment for him yeah and he talked about how turning to shit into you know a chicken sa uh salad sandwich or something like that right mm -hmm. chicken salad and uh, chicken shit into chicken salad thank you thank you yes so you know i when i look at that i feel that made me realize like Everyone should be trying to aspire to or listen to or be picking the brain of our truth, right? Because it's like you're giving, you're not going to be, it's not like um, a certain other companies where you had creative freedoms to do whatever you want. When you think about wrestling in general, it's it's about, you know, it's a drama. It's, it's really an acting show. It's I'm not about MLW that way. You know, <laughs> it's a, it's an actual sport. So yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not an actual sport. So you know, you're supposed to be making people feel. You're supposed to be uh, get people to, to draw in and want to tune in every week or um, find out what's going on next. Because before R2 came along, right, Judgment Day was uh, floundering, kind of like people were getting tired. Oh, Judgment Day starting raw every week. I, I don't. I would disagree. I would. I would fight you on that one because I think Dominic has I. been. Dominic has been the 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 most overheel in the entire company for a year now, and I think Rhea Rhea's on top of her game in you know doing record business. Well, right those, now. I think, those two things I, are I directly think, related. Yeah, and I, yeah. I think <clears throat> I think that he added a new element, obviously, definitely to the Judgment Day. But I I think it's unfair to say that that they were they were floundering because I think I think they, I think they were just hitting the stride. It was a fun little side story. It's and it's still going on. It's it's fun. It, but it, it's yeah. not a main story. It's it's like a it's like a D story, and that's what wrestling needs. It needs stories all the way from A through Z, and that's what Drew mm -hmm. McIntyre said today is that. It feels right. like everybody's doing something now. Yeah, everyone plays a role. That's what made the Attitude Era successful. Any era of wrestling, if you really think about it, even WCW when NWO was cooking, and then you had the cruiserweights, and you had just every, and then you had like the Buff Bagwells and shit in the middle. Yeah. You had everyone playing a role. That's what you need. Yeah, I think the, about Vince the, Russo, but he he did say you need to write stories for everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. awful, yeah. awful. What were you gonna say? I just think that uh, the Judgment Day, uh, I think the company got cold feet when the Judgment Day was like teasing a breakup and Truth yeah. came in at the right time because I don't think that they would have known what to do with the Judgment Day during that, you know, that interpersonal, you know, feud that they were going on with. I think, and I, I don't think the audience wanted the Judgment Day to break up. So in that sense, it was floundering, but I I do believe you know what you said, Marv. Like, yeah, they weren't they weren't terrible. I just think they got cold feet, and Truth came in at the right time. And may I just say the reason why Dominic is the most overheel in the company is because he is the only person in wrestling right now that I can think of off the top of my head that is doing the cowardly heel gimmick with no ego whatsoever. Yeah, yeah, he's there awesome. Is, there is that nothing... shot he took from Becky. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there is nothing in this world that irritates especially grown adult men more than a coward than a coward right. who than a coward who talk, who puffs himself up and talks a lot you know has like the girl like, everyone wants ex yep exactly and and like you know i think that and, and he does not ever try to play the cool heel he does not ever try to have a badass moment he is he knows his role and he knows when to cower mm -hmm. and it's what flair did so well flair was i mean flair could still kick ass when he got in there but with the bag off like the, the way Flair would beg off in the corner and the way he would like run from people. And, and it was just perfect. And, yeah. He's one I, of the few talents that, that I really root for. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I a hundred percent agree with you. Uh, so yeah. uh, John J I D nine, 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 Shout the, out John J I D man. Thank chat up, brother. John, we yeah. love you. Thank you so much. Nine ninety nine. He says with how much fake wrestling's out there, I feel wrestlers are moving further away from the territories. Do you all think they still watch mid South NWA? I don't think they do. 
I honestly don't think they do. I, I think I think in WWE, I think they make them. Sometimes. I hope They've so. I, I, I hope that's part of the curricular at, curriculum at the performance center is that like we're going to sit down and we're going to watch an episode of Mid South and you, and you know you're going to watch a junkyard dog work the crowd, you know, right. or, or you're going to watch Jerry Lawler. Uh, yeah, you're going to watch Jerry Lawler. You're going to watch Rick yeah. Clay. Michael Hayes Piper. is there. He better be showing them shit. You know what I mean? If you're absolutely. Asking, yeah. They well, better like be showing Michael... them that shit. Well, yeah, I hope I'm punishing someone right now. You make them watch current NWA. Oh God, no! That's, oh, that's what the, that's what they no, do for interrogation they in... and they're torturing yeah. people. Right. <laughs> I was gonna say no. That's what they do in AEW. It violates the Geneva Conventions to. to yeah, no, he's NWA. cruel and unusual. Um, <laughs> oh, our buddy, all Jake says, big fan of all you guys and what you do. It's much needed. Yeah. What do you think about Punk dropping Cornette references and all the meltdowns it caused? That was insane. Hilarious. When he when when Love he said. Both. When he was like, "Oh man, like I I listened to the drive through and the um experience and the experience," and I was like, "Did he really just say that?" Be yeah. <laughs> because you know, like it's it's such like a, it's almost like a taboo thing, almost like, it, and that was when I was like, "Oh wow, okay, so this is definitely, um, you know, like he's not being scripted right now. He's, there's no way somebody wrote that line for him." Uh, to go out there and talk about Jim Cornette. And and as a fan of Jim Cornette and a fan of the experience, a fan of the drive through I loved it. And and to watch every... And I, I said, I remember I said last night, though, I was like, oh, they're all coming with the claws out tomorrow. Like, mm -hmm. it's going to be, oh, yeah. Yeah. you know, they're going to be alt-right punk they're going to be calling them. And, you know, they were. It's, it's, right? They were. Well, yeah. they were and, yeah. Which is and funny because Cornette like, and uh, punk, punk is... Everyone's going like, punk is getting cooked today on the IWC. Uh-uh. They're confused as to... Who Who's the meal and who's the chef? He knew exactly what he was doing, and he got exactly the reaction he, he wanted. And it's funny because everybody thinks that I'm a Jim Cornette fan. I've never once in my life, life listened to one of his podcasts. Okay, uh, but uh, I, I just thought it was funny, and and then it was it was a funny comment. And it, 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 whether he does or not, I like when they bring reality into wrestling. They and they recognize the outside world, and that that seemed very much like a CM Punk thing to do to sort of, because he was sort of riffing on, on Pat at the time. So right. I thought it was great. And I thought the reaction was, was great. And, and it felt organic and fun. And the meltdowns today, they're about as artificial as everything, anything else I've seen. So I, I've been enjoying the meltdowns. It's the outrage machine, right? I mean, yeah, it's, right. it's, you know, it, it is, it is a, I don't like this product. So I'm going to find some reason for, for it to go away some reason why it's bad some re and some reason other like you know whether you're sitting there watching it with a stopwatch or whether you you know I, and you know what maybe we're all like guilty of this sometimes like i know i used to watch aew with like a let's see what i'm gonna complain about today like uh you gotta be a little bit you gotta be more open-minded about it and yeah. the, the second he did that and he said the, the line about drew in the, in the skirt i was like oh that's gonna get overblown tomorrow and by the way in the headlock headlines we have a whole bit about that about the outrage machine so if you got if you guys liked my uh my rant last week on the headlock headlines buckle up because there's another one coming um but yeah the uh i thought it was you know i, I thought yeah, it, it was, was a, a it fun was little expected. line i loved brian last's reaction he goes this is just gonna make him sing louder <laughs> <laughs> yeah and the outrage was expected or like the faux outrage whatever you want to call it but um yeah. yeah and then people were you know obviously saying like oh he went from uh supporting trans rights to supporting an anti-trans person and i'm like doesn't uh, jim donate to like lgbt something I, I don't know like i, I don't know all the per i swear he said that on the podcast and i'm just sitting there like i'm sure it's also cringe it's just faux outrage and it doesn't matter you can listen to a podcast i, I don't know i don't know jim personally you know i just like him talking about the history of wrestling and giving his opinions on mm. what the fuck is going on yeah so I don't know. It's just crazy. He's yeah, pretty I'm, uber liberal uh, politically. That's what I mean. That's what I sense. Right. So it's like I, I skip over his political shit. I, I just I cringe out when people. Boy, start yeah, really. Yeah, but, yeah. So I, but uh, I, I, yeah, he's I, a liberal, right? He's a raging lib. So that's all I'm saying. I skip over pretty much any political stuff anyone says, <laughs> like whether from yeah. either side, because I just Bingo. refuse. To, I, I refuse to play that game anymore. Like I was yeah. like one day I was just kind of like, oh, it's Team Red and Team Blue, and they want you to fight each other. Yeah, like, it just doesn't matter. Yeah. Like I was yeah. raised that shit doesn't matter yeah. who you fucking vote for. It's just that, such a dumb thing to care about, dude. That's why. That's why you, you'll never hear that kind of stuff on Toonie Town Wrestling. We're never gonna get political. We're never gonna get like you know. Um, the the only thing is like when I rail against the cancel pigs. Um, right. I, don't I got even, a I don't question, know. Marv. I'm sorry, yeah, go for it, but um, you you had mentioned red and blue. This brings me back to what you had said earlier, at least on Twitter, about how Dave splits 
his Dave Meltzer, I'm sorry. Dave Meltzer like literally keeps that type of atmosphere going with his subscribers versus anybody else. It's it was a ama it was amazing comment that you had made and uh, I just want you to to elaborate on that a little bit if you could. Sure. Um so I think that the the whole like Meltzer's Meltzer's like core fan base, right? They are kind of united around this idea of like we're backing real wrestling because they bought it. Right. Like, Tony Tony Khan did what um a lot of politicians have done in the years a lot of like you know a lot of american pol obama did it trump did it but also you know Calvin figures Coolidge in history did it, fig Warren B. Yeah, Harding. yeah figures in history have done it it's Adolf this Hitler. thing yes yeah, I, 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 I didn't want to go there <laughs> but yeah Jesus Hitler, Hitler Stalin Maum, and Mussolini all did it too like they all do it it is this thing that you love is broken and I can fix it and we can fix it and we can all do it together. And that's how you galvanize a movement around yourself. And when somebody is a part of a movement, when they feel like they are a part of something, that is when, you know, it's hard to get them to criticize it. It's when they'll defend it to the death. And, and that is kind of what's happening. And Dave profits off of that. He profits off the tribalism. That's what it was. Yeah. Right. If he yeah. can, And it's also partly, you know, Dave, Dave has hitched his wagon to that to that horse you know for the AEW mm -hmm. horse and and Dave has to be right Dave has to be the guy that knows exactly where the business is going because if Dave is not the guy that knows what's going on behind the scenes if he's not the guy that knows where the business is going he's nothing that's I mean, his just, entire brand and you know I look I know he's not a very popular uh, figure around a lot of the people probably in the chat or in or even in this panel but the thing about Sean Ross Sapp is you know Twitter behavior notwithstanding the guy gets more right than Melsa does like you know he's kind of become the more like you know, like when Meltzer like makes something up, it's usually Sap that's like, no, nah, that's wrong. And you know, so I, I think he 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 knows that Sapp, his go ahead. Okay. And the thing Sap does, which is actually really smart, and I don't want to make it sound like I'm bashing him by this, uh -huh. but um I've noticed that a lot of the stuff that he gets right, you can find elsewhere before he posts it. Uh -huh. um, exactly. Yeah, he he but Who's he's Sapp? very yeah, good. He's literally. very good at weeding out what is good and what is bad news right mm -hmm. like i or, or someone on but that you know what people is, need people do know. need that filter yeah, yeah dude. Absolutely. it's uh, yeah you can't knock uh, the that only, but the only place that i really think like breaks news on a regular basis now is pw insider yeah, I love um them. and because they're because they break very little news but when they do it's right well, because like, they, I, I think they make sure that it's it's legit, and I think I Sap, I think fact, Sap, they, I, I think Sap does they, his checks too. I think he does. Like, I think he looks into things, and and you know, I I think that if you looked at the tax returns from the Wrestling Observer and from Fightful, one of them is a lot bigger than the other. Oh one, yeah, and I, I'm pretty sure it's Fightful. Uh, yeah. You know, Dave, Dave. So now Dave realizes that the way to keep his people galvanized is to feed into the tribalism war. That's why you get him saying the things he, Oh yeah. WWE's uh, they're all mad at the rock because the rocks cursing or whatever. And then the rock, he just makes know, that shit up. Down. Made that up. It's, right. it's all, it's made up. It's made up. Yeah, and it, it is a, it is a matter of them trying to, um, you know, keep the war going because that's, that's the audience they have now. And that is the audience. Dave is not, Dave is not even internally. Uh, hold on. Go ahead, go ahead, Dust, then Dis. We'll go yeah, ahead. Go ahead. Okay. I'll, I'll well, go I mean, Meltzer routinely says that the AEW TV audience, viewing audience, is is younger than the WWE audience. Mm -hmm. And he's always talking about the key demo. Yet the key demo for SmackDown is like twice as much as it is for Dynamite. Know, Forget but... about uh, Rampage and Collision. But even Raw is close to twice as much as Dynamite. And it's larger audiences and larger demos. So tell me, how is it mathematically possible that the Dynamite viewer is younger? It's not mathematically possible. <laughs> but he'll say it daily. Maybe, maybe a larger percentage of a smaller audience is younger, but you know, it's still more of that audience. But the is demo watching is the a other percentage. Show. It's not a larger percentage. It's a smaller percentage. Yeah, right. I guess and that's he, true. Yeah, I and think, he has no shame. He'll just argue with fucking. I we covered on my show, uh, Pro Wrestle Times podcast. We covered uh, him arguing with like an economist about yeah. fucking the numbers, <laughs> like with uh, AEW. And he has no shame. He'll argue with like a company that's called whatever, like I don't know, something acquisitions. Like they're a firm that fucking, you know, they do numbers. That's what they crunch numbers. He's like arguing with them with that account about fucking. 
you know, it's just he has no shame either. It's just over the years, I've noticed Dave does two things. He really goes after the low hanging fruits in his comments. And also he is he 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 has he has a way of really, you know, turning people against that's what I was gonna say. He has he has the ability and and, and hopes that no one researches what he is saying and when somebody does pinpoint and attacks him for his research you're getting blocked or you're not you're going to get ignored and uh, you know they what a grifter i got to i got to hand it to him he's a grifter sorry i'm going to i'm going to say something that might be controversial here i don't think dave makes anything up i don't think you think, you think he believes it huh you i think, I you, think you're saying he's fed false info i think is what you're well that uh, yeah of course hmm. but I think his main source in WWE is Terry Taylor. And I think he's terrible source. I think they give crap to Ter Terry Taylor to tell Dave Meltzer. That's fake. Like, yeah, they, that's what I've yeah. like heard is what they do, you know? like Because it, Terry Taylor there. was Meltzer's source going back to, you know, the 80s. Like, Terry Taylor wow. was yeah. always a Meltzer guy. Yeah, absolutely. So For years and that, years. Yeah. So the idea that they keep Terry around and just tell him, oh, yeah, uh, this is what we're going to do this week. And then he runs the Meltzer and tells him and they're like, eh, don't we're paying him $50 a week. Who cares? <laughs> like, that's mm. what I think is going on there. So. Mm. You Nailed know it. what? I could honestly I could see that. I could see that happening. Um, do you think Terry Taylor believes it? I'm, I think Terry I don't Taylor even think is, so. I don't think so. I think Terry Taylor is okay. just happy anyone's talking to him. <laughs> yeah, and he's <laughs> Terry, like, Taylor, hey, Terry Taylor is happy. He's like, oh my gosh, I was the Red Rooster, and I'm still employed in wrestling now. Exactly. <laughs> right. Like all these years later, but I, I was almost Mister Perfect. That was when he said he was he he was supposed to be Mister Perfect. <laughs> I was like, come on, man. <laughs> like, Mr. That Perfect was the, would have been dead in a week if it was Terry. <laughs> that was the dumbest thing you've ever said. Like, Mr. Perfect <laughs> was created for Kurt Hennig. Like, it's just like he is Mr. Perfect. Like, right. uh, oh, man. But the, in the terms of Terry Taylor, when he was younger and up and coming, he was sort of like the, the discount version of the Mr. Perfect or the Ric Flair's like everybody thought, you know, he was like, like, well, well, he was Steven Regal then that he's going to be the next guy. He's the next technical guy who can do it all. And he couldn't, he couldn't do it all, but he was sort of that next man up. It's just, he was the perennial bridesmaid. Terry Taylor right. was good in mid South. And then the best thing Terry Taylor did on television was Terrence Taylor. When he was with the York foundation and WCW, yeah. he was That's the best it. part yep. of that group. Besides, obviously, besides Alexandra York, but besides her, he was the best part of that group, and he hit the gimmick fit him, and he was great at it, and he did a great job, and then he couldn't do anything with it. Like he's uh, just, it was he's flair. Guy. It was just no flair. That's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, you know, nobody could have gotten the Red Rooster over. I, I really don't no, think. No, I, no, no. You know, it, it, it's. It takes a special Archer kind of person. I mean, maybe. Oh my god! Did you imagine <laughs> if they made him the Red Rooster now? <laughs> um, yeah, the gobbledygooker, or oh, hey, Neckbeard's back here. Neckbeard, welcome up, back, buddy? my friend. He's muted. And Toonie's here also. <laughs> well, Toonie's in the corner there. Yeah. Hey, um, man, I'm back. I'm just checking everything from the back end just to make sure everything's going okay. Yeah, everything's. You've been, you've been everything's chat. great. What's up? <laughs> it's great. <laughs> it's great. Great. All right. So moving on ahead. Um, hey, how about the fact that Will Osprey can take a joke? Yeah. No, yeah, you good. know, it's it's it <laughs> I thought that was so interesting. The reaction to that. I really respect him for taking the joke because a lot of the people on that roster don't. Yeah, they right. take it to heart. Um, and I get it when you work very hard at something, you want to be taken seriously and be appreciated for your craft. Um, uh, but it's the internet, right? People are going to have their criticisms, people are going to crack the jokes on you. And the I, I think the fact that um Will Osprey really gave praise to um, you know, this is nasty, our uh Mr. A, right? Um, yeah, you know what? I'm I'm gonna actually um show the the, the clip so people know. What we're uh, talking yeah, about. Please yeah, do. Yeah. yeah, let's 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 take a look at that because it's a it's a funny bit. Like I really like the bit is really funny. The other thing about Osprey is that you don't have to be humble. Oh, this is a this, this is an audio clip. Sorry, go ahead now. Play it. Ladies and gentlemen, Will Osprey. Thank you, Tommy. Take the piss off it, bro. The turn is shooting a gun, brother. <laughs> Take the bro, 
with the lions and bears. <laughs> Those are the guys the looking at each other. Give me, bro. Give me the shit and put it to the brigade, bro. Manchester United. Manchester United. Bro, in it. It most certainly is. <laughs> <laughs> last night's promo, you know, I mean, you know, last oh, this night's is the best. promo with Will Ospreay it was just, I mean, you know, uh, put it this way, it was just, it was just out of this world. <laughs> he's got, he's got so either. much charisma. He's so uh, charisma y. He's wearing and, the GCW um, shirt, too. That's the I, perfect I, touch. I, I don't want to say he's better than The Rock. But yeah. <laughs> say he's <laughs> better than the rock. <laughs> That's the other thing I don't get to. I mean, how, I, yeah. how, how, are people, how are people thinking like, okay, Will Ospreay is off the charts with the, with the promo stuff? Like, are you kidding me compared to what we see in WWE? But, you know, I, I'm, I'm glad. I, I think it's so hilarious that the number one enemy, who is not me, right, or not any of us here, Alfred, and I hope we can get him on the podcast one day. I would love yeah, that. He's, he's so, so funny. Alfred Tonua, he's and so funny. Is, man. Shout him out for that is, one. Is, this is nasty. By, by Will Ospreay, and it set off a huge um, yeah, look at Look at Will. Yeah, look at Will's response. Got roasted like a potato here. Very good, bruv. Like, <laughs> that's a what, <laughs> that's how that's how. Okay, so here's my take on this. This is how a man who is um, confident in himself and his product. Yep. Uh, exactly. That is how you react to criticism, and it, it is it is why you don't see someone like Triple. If you are like in insecure about the product that you're presenting, you're going to take any criticism of it as you know as an as an attack, and you're going to attack. In the beginning, with Tony Town Wrestling, when people would criticize things, I was guilty of this. I would attack, but people would be on Twitter like, "Oh, you're failing YouTube. You got no no one watches your channel." I would be like, like I'd get mad, and I would like try to fight back, and I'd be like, "No, we got this many subscribers." But now, like. I'm just I, I'm like yeah I don't have to respond to that <laughs> like yeah, you, you know like, Will results... Osprey Will Osprey is British I mean he comes from you know British comedy some of the best comedy in the world so yeah, I'm sure he you know yeah absolutely you know what I was saying earlier is that you, you don't have to you don't have to be humble to have humility and Will Osprey can has shown us he can take a joke he's sort of like how Randy Orton is you know he doesn't give any f's but Will Osprey seems good natured about it Randy's just like I don't care. I like it was a lot. good-natured rib. That's why. I mean, yeah. it wasn't anything too too out of bounds. It's not like he talked about his wife or anything like that. So, yeah, he, he knows, he knows I like he's a lot, townie. Right? He knows he's he's a you know the a south end of of you know London kind of you know governor kind of guy. <laughs> yeah, I like Will Osprey. I think I, I I think he's super talented. And I when you. I know Marvin, you watched him in TNA against Josh Alexander. And oh, can, it was great. He can tell a yeah, story a great in there, man. man. And he knows psychology. He's another one of those guys who just works for the audience that he Wait, has. And yeah, one of the things I appreciate about him is like how much he changed his style over time from being the flippy guy and then realizing how much wear and tear that was having on his body and, he, uh, and how he couldn't really do certain things anymore and started to change up his style um and still be relevant at the at the end of the day yeah he looks like an athlete I, that's yeah. the first thing that strikes out to me it likes it looks like he's he's roughed it up you know coming up and you know he probably played a little bit of rugby you know what i mean like so you can just tell right off the bat he he seems like a tough guy you know what i mean yeah, you know, and, and a guy like like I said, it's a matter of confidence. You know, it's a matter of being confident in yourself and in the brand that you present. And wrestlers, each yes, you 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 work for a brand, AEW, WWE, TNA, whatever it is you work for. Uh, but at the end of the day, you yourself are a brand. You are you are an independent contractor, and you are marketing yourself. And he's he's confident in what he does. He leaves it all out in the ring, and he knows he's good at what he does. Now, the problem that he is running into now is that. Dave has has made him his chosen one. And the, the problem with that is you saw what happened with Omega. It makes people start to root against you. And, and yeah, that's just the expectations way too high. And then mm -hmm. when you don't live up to it, and especially the praise, because there are people who really think that he's the end all be all when it comes to the opinions. Um, just take it one step back though. My opinion on Osprey, and I've beat it to death like on my podcast and whatnot, but it's just I love him all around, one of the best in the world. My only thing is that he's like booked himself into a corner kind of, if that makes sense, but just he's every match they people kick out of nine of his like most devastating moves. He's got to just like come on dynamite yes. and beat some guys with each move because 
like now that you're on, I guess this larger audience, I don't know, whatever, but you like, not everyone knows that he's back elbowing. Like he, not everyone knows that he's got to hit nine finishers on everyone. And that's all of his big matches. You just know, right. okay, he's probably going to win, but he's going to hit with every move in the book. And all of his moves are so insane that like, you can just do one of those crazy ass moves win, and it would be so much more effective. Agreed. So I think, but that's his bad. Like whoever he comes up with his matches, obviously. So that's my one advice to him would be like dude just do one move and then end it like you're you can but get that away would with die it, you know? in front of that audience man yeah because yeah, 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 they want to see osprey right. kill him so, yeah i get it i get Phil, it but... i would i would take this one step further i would say that is advice i would give to any wrestler in yeah, the world just any wrestler. the the fact that finishes don't work anymore is one of the things that drives me crazy it used to be when hogan hits the boot in the leg drop that's it you're done you know the right. only, the only the only time you're ever escaping is if it was like the sharpshooter and you were near the ropes or something like that or Flair never finished with the figure four but no, I mean yeah. like you know the stunner hits you're not getting up maybe in like the main event of WrestleMania you're gonna kick the pedigree okay gentlemen uh, JD McDonough and Ricochet showed us exactly how to, if bro, you're under two hundred pounds know. that's how you work the match it's not reversal 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 strike it last night was reversal strike. That's it's a beautiful thing to see that happen in, in the match. I, I, the, the, when the, um, the, the sunset flip pile driver, like, I mean, the Canadian, Canadian destroyer, I still right. the, sunset flip pile driver. the, um, it, it was, it was perfect. And he sold it so perfectly. His body oh, yeah. just kind of went, it went like, rigid and then, yeah, it went rigid. And then like, it was, it, that match was breathtaking. And then I mean, it that's how you work. So everyone right. got over. It's just like, come on, man. It's so simple. That's all you got to do. They, not of, only did they struggle, they sold. It was, they, they engaged with the crowd, you know, and by engaging with the crowd, you got them into it. And so you didn't have to work too hard to make that match uh, a beautiful match and while we're talking about that match i saw so many comments from people today saying that where's the story where there is uh, a story in that match the story is that the lower members of judgment day aren't pulling their weight and ricochet keeps taking i, I that the, the place it was a great going, story yeah great story that he keeps beating them yeah, and the place this is going, in my mind, obviously, is some connection between Ricochet and Andrade. That's I see that coming up somehow. I don't know if it's going to be as a team or they're going to be mm -hmm. against each other, but somehow Ricochet and Andrade are going to be, uh, after WrestleMania, that's going to be something. And yeah. I, I was listening to uh, 83 Weeks, and Eric Bischoff put the match over and was like, I love it, and Ricochet's a phenomenal talent. And then Conrad goes, well, you should check out his match with Will Ospreay from 2017 in New Japan. I'm like, Ugh. no, Conrad, don't. <laughs> You're going to turn him against him. Yeah, no, that, exactly. That's the way you turn guy like Eric Bischoff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ricochet is an indie guy who got into WWE, and he he just got it. You know, like he understood how to still be him and how to still like, you know, do the things that brought him to the dance, but at the same time, conform to that WWE style in a way that made sense, you know, like to tell the stories. Of, I think I can say, I wish that they had actually given like Ricochet and Brock, like, like, I think I wish they had like, let them go a little bit more instead of making it overly realistic with Brock, just flattening him. But uh, yeah, that match was spectacular. I had no nothing but positives to say about that. It put JD McDonough on the map for me because honestly he had, he had kind of been off my radar at that point, but I was, he like, was oh, okay. the guy who made the match for me personally. Yeah. He worked his ass off, yeah, sold, sold like a million dollars. And you know, he knows what he's doing in there. You know, you can tell these guys are not right. sloppy shop workers. So yeah, it was beautiful. I loved it. He's, he's always in the right spot. His timing is impeccable. He doesn't have a good, he doesn't have a great look or a great personality, but he's always in the right spot. I don't think anyone will ever get hurt with him in the ring. You know, speaking of the judgment day, do you guys think that they are trying to spin into Dominic Ray too? And if yeah. so, do you think that maybe like, like it, it seems to just kind of come out, it, it came out of the blue, you know? I don't know. Phil, what do you think about that? Uh, yeah. So, you know, I don't know. To me, I was, I thought we were going towards like a lucha warfare. I, I put it out on Twitter. I was like, yeah, lucha warfare and then Bad Bunny's music hits or something. Everyone yeah. pops. But it, and then may, so maybe Dom kind of does his own thing away from Judgment Day and is involved uh -huh. in that. 
Um, so I could see that happening, maybe like a multi-man match where it's like the uh, Legado del Fantasma and Latino World Order, and then maybe Dom aligns with Legado, maybe Andrade. I don't know. There's all that there, and that's how you could incorporate that whole. Um, or no, sorry, I think Andrade's over on Raw. Yeah, so he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think he was approached no by by um, I think Electra Lopez or Zelina Vega at one point. Anyways, we're going too far back. But so I don't know. But it seems like you could just do that match because Ray's so fucking over and Dom so. Mm hot as a heel right now it's like you could just pull the trigger on it i wouldn't it, be mad at it but it, does it doesn't need a lot of warmed in there it doesn't need a lot of wind up but yeah. i i don't know man it like, just I seems just, shoehorned i agree with you if they do do that okay do do i i'm not mad at it but i'm also not uh i'm not gonna cry about and it like either, the feud you know? is the feud has kind of been reigns and escobar and like that was kind of like the story that i was more engaged in and i loved dom and ray last year i thought it was fantastic i thought it was perfect uh even even with all the product placement but the um yeah i don't know i i just the, the I think that you don't you, like the sin emojis or you do if, like the sin emojis <laughs> if you were if you were going to build to that match i think the time to do it was way well before two weeks before wrestlemania yeah that's the yeah, i agree i, I, I agree well, with that. at some point they've got to explode so that when so when dominic when he's at his lowest and hits rock bottom his father comes and save saves him and then you know he passes mm. the mask along to him you know in you know two years from now please don't yeah. wear the mask you know i was i when when dom was first becoming a wrestler i was like oh i can't wait to see dominic get his mask now i never want him to have a mask no he shouldn't ever never never ever ever especially because he started without one um i was gonna say though speaking of shoehorned in and i don't know if you had this topic but what about jade cargill as well they're sort of last minute kind of fit in her in and people are uh, she's gonna be on smackdown this week and people are kind of uh complaining about that some people like it um i think oscar's hurt so i think uh -huh. they need to put her in like a multi-man kind of thing to have her involved um what do you guys think about that like obviously i would like the last thing is just you're shoehorn shoehorning it in i'd rather it be like a big deal yeah i was a but little it's wrestlemania put her on man she looks like a star and it's the biggest wrestlemania ever pal so stick her on it i i agree with just have a multi-woman match night one and then the eo bailey night two or whatever i was very surprised um that they were going to debut her on smackdown without her going to nxt because i'm always of the belief mm -hmm. that the, that going to nxt hurts no one like that is the only person that never went was what AJ and Dominic. Right. And then eventually Dominic did go. Yeah. Uh, and he did go. Yeah. But the, um, yeah, I, I don't know, man. Like I, if she's ready, look, I'm not going to split hairs with Shawn Michaels of who's ready to go on to Monday night to go on to SmackDown or whatever. But I, I wanted to see her make a run with that NXT women's roster at first. I, I really wanted to see her do that. And if they're not doing it, then there must be a reason. I think they only have a couple years, two, three years with her to make her a star, and then she's going to go to Hollywood and, and do other things. So I, uh, you I know, think you're she, right. She has been at NXT. She's been at the Performance Center. She just hasn't been on TV. And I think when you make a big deal about signing a giant free agent, you don't put them on NXT. She, she's not Brian Pillman Jr. She's not Sean Spears. So right. I think that... You know, whether you're shoehorning her into a WrestleMania match, it's better than not being on a WrestleMania yeah, match. Yeah, and it's going and it's gonna sow the seeds of what everyone wants to see, which is her versus Bianca, her versus Rhea, you know, her, her versus Charlotte, all, all of the powerhouses. Mm -hmm. If Charlotte wasn't hurt, I'm pretty sure we'd be seeing her versus Char Charlotte in a one on one match because Charlotte will make it look, you know, right. like a million bucks. But it, it's gonna be what it's gonna be. And I'm just surprised how much how much star power they're putting on smackdown and and how little new talent they're putting on raw which is the three-hour show and, and desperately needs some sparks but i guess yeah. they're really counting on cm punk to get healthy right yeah and yeah, it's moving so. dude, raw's going it's going to netflix and so i just feel like they're loading up smackdown so it can get the biggest bang for whatever buck it's gonna get or has gotten that i don't know i'm not familiar if it is moving to usa right now or not or if anything's been announced but it's good. They're just loading up that show because I feel like that's going to be the one that stays on TV. I think SmackDown to USA has been confirmed. No, okay, confirmed. there you go. Yeah, they're, they're, they have a four or five year contract that just starts October of 2025, something somewhere around then. Yeah, if there go. is anybody in aside from Dominic that I want to see succeed so much, it's Jade Cargill. I hope and I pray that they treat her properly and that you know she she gets the training that she needs. She gets 
all the all the things that are coming to her she does i think she deserves it when i saw her on aew television first time ever i was blown away and then of course she mm. just was a botch machine but i am so rooting for her and i and i i trust that the company you know if they put her out on television just like they did with the royal rumble i think you know they know that she'll do well for herself yep i agree i just hear and i see superwoman you know, I just see her starring in a movie. It, yeah. She's amazing. I couldn't believe, like, it, it. you guys talk about, like, there, I've seen a lot of people talk about, like, how, you know, Tony fumbled CM Punk. I'm here to tell you, Jade Cargill was the biggest fumble that Tony Khan Never. did ever. There's no doubt. He had a homegrown talent right in his hands. I mean, she was just a million dollars. Yeah, that could be its own show right there. What's his biggest fumble? So, <laughs> well, I mean, yes. Co Cody, P Cody, Punk, Jade. I mean, Cody and Punk right now are two of the biggest stars in the world, and Jade. I think that's in her future. I mean, so you know what? This is good. This is good to our next super chat here. John J I D nine nine nine. Once more, man, MVP tonight. Yeah, John's uh, for, the shit, man. Yeah, Shout for, out. 499 big shout out there so speaking to people like jade if you all had to predict who's the next aew wrestler that you think is coming over who's it going to be i mean mjf yeah no uh the <laughs> the, 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 the no, obvious one i think <laughs> the obvious one i think is uh dustin but i mean i think dustin will come in like more of a backstage role but i think i think wardlow is counting the days i, well, I think you know, i think the the obvious one because he's free right now is mike santana uh, I think the the next AW mm. young star is probably Ricky Starks. Wardlow, I think, is is tied up for a while. Dustin just resigned recently for another couple of years, so uh, I, I'm not sure about any of those things. I mean, I hope it's not Matt Hardy. That's for damn sure. But I, I think oh. everyone everyone thinks it's going to be Ricky Starks, and and I think that's a reasonable guess. But I I could see Santana on. Can any why not? Can any of you guys sell me on Ricky Starks, please? I, I can't. Try. I don't see it, so I can't. I don't see it either. I don't yeah, see it so either. I would just say, <laughs> what'd, you, what'd you say about Ricky Stocks? I, I missed that. Can you say that again? He said, can anyone Ooh. sell him on Ricky Stocks? Like Watch his good. early NWA okay. power stuff. So when, you yeah. have Yes, exactly. Whoever suggested that, you have to just go on YouTube and watch his stuff on NWA power because, yeah. you know, honestly, like I, I see his stuff sparingly in AEW, but the stuff on on AEW Power is like next level. NWA, yeah, it's NWA like, Power. He he was a phenomenal. Power. Eli Drake yeah, too stood out in the early days. All it, this, yeah. Was he working heel? I thought to myself, yeah, why yeah. why didn't I throw in the world title on him? They put him with the TV title of off all titles, but you know, He's I so damn thin. He has he has the charisma, right? Like he okay. did. You know, I hate to say it, but he did remind me of a young Rock with how he looked, how he acted, and things like that. And I think with enough seasoning, especially with having um the pc seasoning on it he could be a star for sure yeah, yeah i think i think ricky starks is in that category of like austin theory with me where it's like there's something there they just gotta find it they just gotta yeah. find it and crack uh -huh. it and figure out what it is and if that's gonna happen anywhere it's gonna happen in in an xt um because yeah, sean can get it i'm sure sean can get out sean you know, he's one of the greatest of all time yeah the, yeah uh, uh, i can tell you who is not going <laughs> to WWE, that's MJF. Uh, okay, just, interesting. I, uh, I got. I'll I don't go. understand this weird work go. that they're doing. I I do not believe it for a second. Look, no. If it, he if, if he is actually not signed, if it, yeah. we all we all believe that he signed late last year, you know, like well before his contract was up. That's why they kept the belt on him and ran with him and made him the the centerpiece of everything. If that was not the case, and he was and he had not resigned yet, then shame on Tony Khan for putting that much effort into that guy. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't understand why he would do this kind of work where like the bidding war of 2024, whatever the heck it's supposed to be. Like, I don't understand why you would do that. Why you'd pull his merch down while you take him off the website, because shouldn't the, the storyline be that he's coming back to get revenge on Adam Cole. The only yeah. thing that makes me think that he might actually go to WWE is that they've completely shut up about the bidding war of 2024. Not to mention, isn't this the same formula that Cody ran Cody. into? Like, yep. I mean, they, they, he, he was completely erased from the annals of AEW. Next thing you know, he's at WrestleMania. I don't know, gentlemen. I think, if he, uh, if he was resigned, be... there's there, like, I'm 90% sure he is, but there's 10% of me that says if he was, Dave Meltzer would be everywhere saying, 
uh, he's been negotiating with WWE to push over the, to yeah. push the story yeah. that he might go to WWE so that it's a surprise when he shows back up in AEW. But now the fact that everyone's been completely radio silent makes me a little suspicious. About I'm going to say that's that's good injuries point. are worse than they want than they thought. That's yeah, I'm going to say something that I think is going to turn some heads. Everyone's like, oh, he's going to show up at WrestleMania. No, he's no. not. If they yeah. signed him, you know what he's showing up? NXT. Mm-hmm. That's where he's showing up. Maybe they'll announce that he signed. He'll start in NXT. I'm sorry. Everyone's like, oh, could you imagine if MJF came out and helped Cody win the title? I said, yeah, 90% of the audience are going to go, who the hell's that? Fart right, Mar, you had mentioned Fart You had mentioned earlier that it's a weird work. I don't understand the the process of why they're doing, why they're taking them off the website, why they're not mentioning them or anything like that. Yeah. All you're doing is generating interest, more interest in WrestleMania. Yeah. Or the raw after WrestleMania. They don't know how to do a worked shoot or a yeah, shoot. Boy, oh boy. AW, dude. None of it makes sense. That's why it None doesn't make it. sense. And that's why he's just there. He signed that's, like way long ago. That's what, and everyone everyone always talks about like why would you know Tony heap so much praise on him before he left and why would he push him so hard? And like, yeah, that totally makes sense if you're talking about a normal person. Okay, but we're talking about Tony Khan, right? And I, I can totally see that guy thinking if I push him really hard and if I make him really like me and think that I'm going to be good with him, then he's going to resign with me. Well, and like, I think there's, also there's, you, you saw the situation where like, you know, he was letting like Moxley did not have a, a you know, a contract while he was the world champion going yeah. into that match with Punk, right. which is why he was able to get his way. Yeah. It, it, that's something that, how does that even happen? Like if we're he, getting two weeks out from your contract ending and you have not resigned yet, I'm putting the belt on somebody else. Of course. Yeah. It, it, this it, is it, this is where Tony Khan needs like an old style wrestler. I don't know who that person is, but yeah, he needs so. somebody in his ear. He's got yeah, a better he, he, he doesn't listen he's to gonna, them. Yeah. He, yeah. yeah Jim Ross is right there. He's right they, there. They, they, they announced the COO today is a former WWE guy. He, it'll make right. zero difference. Not a not a bit of difference. Well, in yes, Jim Jim Ross. Wow. I'm sure when he when Jim Ross got there, he was probably like, "Well, all right, let's make a difference in this world, man. I'm going to give you all my knowledge. I'm going to give you all everything I got. My by God, we're going to do this." And then, like by the time the the first year was over, he was just like, "I just won't go home." That's by God, that's a big yeah. paycheck. By God, by God, that paycheck. By God, that my paycheck phone. is ginormous. I stubbed my toe. I stubbed my toe. I can't be a dynamite. <laughs> uh, so desire death with a super chat. Five dollars. Thank you so much. Oh, man. Coming in. Desire. You Good guys, shit. Uh, desire you guys death, are amazing. Uh, he says, anybody else waiting for the Sasha Banks backstage tantrum? Also, can we stop with the death matches in AEW? The real ones suck. Um, okay. So, yes, yeah, Sasha is is a known disruptive force in the locker room. And I don't think I'm out of line saying that. I think there's enough you know, historical uh, information out there. She, she I, you know what? I guess uh, to, to be as negative as possible, you could say she's a backstage cancer to be as positive as you want to be. You can say like, she knows what she wants and she advocates for herself. Uh, so wow. it, you know, it's a matter of, um, I don't think it's, a matter of if, it, it's, it's not a matter of if it's a matter of when, because that yeah. women's, lo- that women's locker room is already the high school for mean girls as it is. And I, I think it's just a combustible element. I mean, you're, I you're can't adding. Wait for her I give it 90 days to be counter politicking with each other. It's going to be beautiful. But the problem is, you you know, it's that situation is going to be where Britt Baker is going to run into a wall because if she has the ironclad creative control and her own writer and all these things that everyone thinks she has, that's like the Roddy Piper. You don't throw rocks at a man with a machine gun. It's Hopefully, Tony Khan learned his lesson. If when he signed uh, Mercedes Monet, he should have had Britt Baker right across the table as she's signing and say, listen, we're going to do some big business, ladies. OK, mm-hmm. let's hash whatever we've got. Let's hash that out and let's do make think, some money. Do you think they've got they've got heat with each other? I don't think they even knew each other. No, no, no. But but but. Now. Just just as a precaution, you do something like that. You know Britt Baker is is one of your top stars. You have she Mercedes Mer- Right. Of course. Well, I mean, she Who thinks she's a top star, and Tony thinks that she's a top star. So I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna put my Bruce Pritchard hat on for a little bit. Um and say that if she That's was a, a success, hat. yeah, I know. If she was a success punk head, if she was a successful top star. They'd be doing a lot better than they were doing than they're doing right now. Well, That's okay, right. Right. Let's, let's qualify the statement. She is a top star for AEW. 
Um, and, yes. and I think she, I think the fans love her. I think, uh, you know, she can draw. She can if booked correctly. I don't get it personally. I, I never really understood the whole. Brit He's Baker. never drawn. Yeah, I don't she, think she's she drew in her drawn. hometown. I think she she drew in her hometown, and that's more than yeah. you can say for some maybe. Of so, the, the thing is, is everyone's like, oh, I can't wait to see Mercedes versus this girl and this girl and this girl. And that's all great. It's very great. But like, if you're going to put her, people say Britt Baker's at the top of everyone's list. And I'm like, dude, she doesn't work enough to like Baker's not in the ring enough to even go out there and have like, that's why right. the last couple of times we saw her, it was kind of sloppy shop. Why? Because she wasn't, she's trying to do all these elaborate spots with like Julie right. Hart or whatever, yeah. Anna Jay, whatever. And she hasn't even been in the ring. She's in the ring once every four months. And that's oh, the overall problem too. I think she, with the she's wrestled made, once on TV in the last 16 months. Th there you go. And so that's wow. the overall problem. Like in WWE, it seems so polished. And when they do do the huge spots, not to make it, lower one to raise the other but when like when they do do the huge spots on the pay-per-view it's because they're polished people have touched 50 times 100 times 10 right. times off tv there's none of that in aew and so Britt baker shows up is she gonna have a a banger with mercedes or does someone get hurt by accident because they're not fucking callous <laughs> up to the i just don't know I just hope right. for the best. Well, and let's also yeah. remember that that Mercedes Monet, Sasha Banks, very injury prone. I mean, yeah. she's right. one of those she's one of those people that's out on the shelf a lot. It's my biggest fear. And, and you know, she's going to have to work a very physical style. And I believe she can work that physical style. She's here's the thing about a lot of people think I hate Mercedes Monet or I hate uh, Sasha Banks. I think that she's great. I think she's an excellent performer. I don't think she's worth being the highest paid woman yeah. in the history of wrestling i don't think she's better than Rhea. i don't think she's better than especially not charlotte i think yeah. charlotte's the greatest of all time i know that's not a popular opinion but i think charlotte is light years beyond everybody um uh, yeah I, mean, I i i don't think she's better than becky i don't think she's better than bianca i think uh, bailey's a better all-around performer i yeah, think i, I think bailey because bailey can talk yeah bailey's just as good as her in the ring and bailey can talk bailey proved to us that she can be insanely entertaining over the last couple of years that's why we're in the situation we're in now where she's made eo sky like interesting like and like, that story uh, that story on smackdown so good right now it too. is yeah it, it is, is. And, and, and i was hating on it and now i just love it now that bailey's out of damage control it's just <sighs> it's won me over like yeah, I love, uh, I, I loved the idea that they were all like talking about her behind her back and like you know talking in Japanese. I mean, when she Bianca, like you know, it, Bianca's perfect. Mm -hmm. Her her reaction to the whole thing it, yeah. and yeah, I, she got yeah. over with me too. I was hating on her. She started getting over with me, dude. Because they're starting to let her be her again. They're mm -hmm. not. Like, Bianca but, was playing the role of Drew McIntyre, but stained face. Like she was uh -huh. fucking Trinity or Naomi rather. But she's like, but I'm still a good guy. I'm not going to lose myself. So it's like it was the same story, but it, but she went a different way, and it actually right. is working very well. I think with with Bianca, it's a matter of. So I thought Bianca in NXT. What I was like, oh, this this lady is it. Like this is this is the future. And wow, know, really? Right okay. That. Cool. Yeah, I loved it. She was she was a badass. Wow. I'm like, she really is the big ass, strong ass, fastest. Like, you know, she's out there throwing these ladies around. She's doing these incredibly athletic things. This is a quality <clears throat> elite athlete. And like, and, and it looks like a woman that will fight you until you are dead. Okay. Right. And then she gets to the main roster, and now suddenly she's smiling. She's, she's skipping, skipping. She's crying, mm -hmm. crying all the time. Like, stop right. it. And yeah. I'm like, you sap Vince sapped everything good away. Yeah. Triple H knows how to book her. He's the one that did it in NXT. So we're starting to see a return to form. We're starting to see the return of, of what could be a female Stone Cold Steve Austin, like an ass kicker, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I think that's what I think what they everyone thought Ronda was going to be and ended up not being, which we'll get to Ronda in a minute. I want to answer this, uh, this second question here that from Desire. He said, can we stop with the death matches in AEW? The real ones suck. Yeah, death matches. Um, so I, I, I'm going to like say something that might surprise people. I don't, I, I like watching death matches, but I don't watch it like it's professional wrestling. I watch it like the way like I used to watch bum fights. Yeah. Like, no, like if this idiot wants to go hurt himself, like, yeah, I'll watch it. Like I watch it the way I watch Superhuman on YouTube. I'm like, yeah. I don't I, I'm like, I, this feels exploitative for me to be watching it, but you know, I'm still gonna watch it. Like woot woot. Right. Like, woot, woot. I, I, yeah, I've got a question. Is. How like uh, I, I have not been to an independent show in, in decades. You lucky duck. How are the yeah, 
how are those how are those matches conducted do any of you like i i watch this and i'm like why are the police not involved <laughs> all right now i'm right. not that you know that's would, stupid but i you know what i mean i was lightly involved with a uh independent company who kind of did that stuff a little bit in the early right. 2000s and it's what you think it is it's uh an extra payday because that's we what have, I would hope it yeah. is. <laughs> no, like an extra hot dog. Like yeah, an extra hot dog oh, and an extra firm handshake. Yeah. And like, and like Lord. we got some duct tape and some glue backstage. There's a guy who, there's a there's a nurse who is dating one of the wrestlers. <laughs> We're going to have her stitch people up if we need it. Yeah. And then we have an ambulance <laughs> on call. And right. that's it, man. Wow. It, it's, it, it's not. Yeah, we... Yeah. Uh, the company that I kind of did stuff with was, I mean, I didn't work. I didn't wrestle, but um, they got, remember Madman Pondo? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. <laughs> uh, he was all over like juggalo stuff. Yep. Every time he uh, Yes, that would town, be why I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Every time yeah. He, he, he would come to town and every time he did, they, they got one guy. There was never anybody else that wanted to work Pondo, and this guy wouldn't work any other shows except the ones Pondo was on. And he would come in, and it would just be like, "Okay, we're gonna throw you in tax, we're gonna split you open, we're gonna do this, <laughs> we're gonna do this." And they'd be like, "Okay, yeah, that's fine." And it, he was just happy to be there. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's. I, I'm sure GCW is a little more, ha, you know, has more stuff going for it. But a <laughs> lot of that stuff that you see, where it looks like, you know, okay, this guy came out of the crowd and set the on fire for them and then somebody else put the ladder in the right place like that's right. not exactly what you think it is so, yeah um, but the second part of the question is how don't the, the police get involved it's because they go to places where they know the police aren't going to get involved yeah. they, they yeah. Yeah. The and when there's no athletic commission right. wow yeah. okay or well, so, or they pay off the athletic commission they pay the money they should be given the well you're paying off the the athletic commissions are always crooked so you're always paying yeah. them off but like so if you were to run a, an independent show in new jersey so in new jersey they they did um they did something with christine todd whitman who was the governor there years ago where they mm -hmm. um the, the wrestling is not considered a sport there it is considered entertainment it's an entertainment show so anyone can do it you don't have to have a license you don't have to do any of that now pennsylvania and new york those are right. uh, wrestling is a sport there so you in order to to run a show in new york for instance which you know when kevin apollo gets on the show in the future he'll tell you all about it because he he had to get a new york promoter's license you got to have mats around the ring you need a doctor backstage it takes everyone's blood pressure before they go out there it's it's so much that right. has to go you have to have guardrails, which a lot of indie feds don't do. And I'm like, why? Why does no one have guardrails? Like this, that's like <laughs> such an important thing. Um, but yeah, th th that's why you see a lot of like independent promotions running in those kinds of states where it's considered an entertainment show and not a sport because there's a lot of hoops. And then you have a lot of guys that will like rent their promoter's license out to other like to people. Like so, if, if if I have a New York promoter's license and you know Phil wants to run a show in New York, I can right. be like. Okay, Phil, here's my promoter's license. Technically, I'm the promoter of this show, but it's your show. And Phil's gotcha. gonna give me like 500 bucks or something like that. A wow. Um, yeah. it, Incredible. it's all shady. It's all shady the way it works. Like the right. have, like, you know, like there's layers to all this stuff. But yeah, yeah um the I, um the death oh, matches. I, oh, go ahead, Phil. I was just gonna say, so I had the Reverend Dan Wilson. He actually invented the name the phenomenal one for AJ Styles. I had him on Pro Wrestle Times podcast, and he was also a part of last year of this uh thing. Like, so they're doing like cinematic death matches now. So he was part of like a movie called The Death of, and it was like this big monster character named Cruel. And there's this guy, Matt Tremont. And so Hairline, he's a regular on Pro Wrestle Times uh podcast. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with him, but he's a juggalo straight up. He's into the death match. I don't he's super into WWE and death match. Uh -huh. I don't get it. He, I don't get how he's he's the <laughs> biggest cornet mark, but he loves deathmatch wrestling. So um, but yeah, we, there is something about deathmatch wrestling. Yeah, he tries to like, explain I can't it to look me. away. It's, yeah, the, the but this cinematic movie, The Death of, got over uh, with me really well. So they're doing stuff like that too for like IWTV, where it's like, uh, like Marv said, it's like entertainment, you know, so they can get away mm -hmm. with like, I don't know. It's, it, I, I find some of it fascinating. Um, but I've also seen some shit like the Carnage Cup, where it's like 20 people in a backyard somewhere, and it's just right. that. they're doing the like most violent that Nick Gage shit. At. That, yeah, and there's no one, there's no ambulance there, and they're just yeah. doing the most grotesque right. spots, and you're just like, what the fuck is this? And, Actually, and I, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure Nick Gage did die at one of those. Shows. Yeah, he did. Blood <laughs> he got revived. Awful, awful. What were you saying? Um. Uh. 
damn, I kind of forgot. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like how many, how many times does this happen in, you know, uh, these independent shows? Is it match after match death match? Or is it like one of those things where it's just yeah. like, yeah, you're going to see this spectacular event and you know, there will be this death match or is it like an entire event of death matches? No, no, we're, we're, I'm sorry. Death I'm sorry. Promotions to death match pr promotions, and that's how they do it. It's the whole show. Wow, I mean, Jesus! Who's AEW, watching that shit? Yeah, but I think. Hey, but desire death <laughs> questions. Can we stop the death matches in AW? And the answer is no. We cannot. We can't. It's, right. it's yeah. We to yeah. Person. Tony Khan is the only one right. who can stop it. <laughs> And as long as long as he's got you know Moxley drinking blood and building a house out of bones, you know it's not gonna. That yeah, don't gonna happen. Title should have been the hardcore death match, and then they could circle in like old ECW legends and bring in the indie death match guys if they wanted to, and had Mox reign with the FTW, and I could be hardcore <laughs> Scooby Doo wah wah, you know, and he could be cool all he wants in his cool little division that was made. That's what the FTW title should have been. Instead, it's just on hook. Wrestling yeah, Jericho. But have, but um, before, we, before we get all the way away from indie wrestling, um, let me throw in there that that's not all indie wrestling is. No, um, no, of course, yeah, of course not. Of course not. And, no. Like I have, we have an indie wrestling company around here, and they're not the greatest. And you know, you look at the guys, and you're like, oh, some of those guys are too old. Some of those guys are too big. Some of those guys don't. Right. But they, but there are still groups out there of people who just love wrestling the weekend warriors who go out there and make 60 70 bucks to give families a good time on saturday nights and i think a lot of that gets overlooked now because of the gcws and the in the companies like that that kind of overwhelm everything right, um right. If you but if you do it like if you are in any like i don't live in a big town i have to drive an hour to go see it but if you live in any populated area, just if you go online and search your area in indie right. wrestling, you can find some fun stuff and you should support those guys because like I yeah. took my kid to one of those shows and he's I told him there's never I'm I, I was not there's never gonna be a point where we are front row for a WWE show most right. Right. He's right, never right. gonna he's never gonna slap Cody Rhodes' hand. But you know what? Every single wrestler that came out that night, he got he got to go face to face with them or slap their hand or do cool, something like cool. that and feel like he's part of the show. And right. that is something that gets lost in a lot of these conversations. So support right. a local indie. They're not all death matches and stuff like no. that. There's yeah. Plenty yeah. Support independent wrestling. Absolutely. Yes, dude. I, I saw Cody do an indie and do a job for a local job, like a local town guy, dude. It was crazy. It was so I awesome. Met, yeah. We met Jimmy Hart at the last show. He was just there and he yeah. was just hanging out and walking. <laughs> awesome. Around. You know, and that's you, you'll get that. Talk about a man that well. doesn't age. Yeah, that's yeah, Jimmy oh Hart. He ages. You trust me. I, I just saw him at MCW. You, you don't want to see him up close. Nah. <laughs> no makeup. <laughs> uh, all right, move, moving off of indie Lock wrestling. Now. Uh, Thank you guys so, for that information, though. That was appreciated. Thank you. How about the fact that Ronda Rousey is basically the new Ryback oh, with God, what she's dude. been doing? <laughs> Just so you know, yeah. as an MMA mark, everyone in the MMA community disliked her on her way out of that space as well. Just so you guys know, she exited wrestling the same uh -huh. way she left MMA. And yeah, it's disappointing to see, honestly. I mean, so now I think I guess she figures with the with all the Vince, um, you know, discourse out there that they, um, you know, we can that that that. Picking at WWE is the way to go to get, um, you know, publicity for her book. So now, but like, she's admitting to getting a concussion from Stephanie McMahon. Doesn't that like ruin your entire brand, lady? Like, you're supposed <laughs> to be the baddest woman on the planet, and yeah. the, and the boss's daughter gave you a concussion with an open-handed slap. I don't it know. did look like she got knocked out, you know, standing up for a second. At least the the clip that I saw, I was just like, holy shit, she smacked the hell out of her. Yeah, well, I mean, look, at the end of it, like. She, you know, I don't like the Saudi Arabia shows, you know, any more than the next guy does. You know, there, there's just, I don't know. But the, um, she went there and took, took her family and took the prince's money. And now all of a sudden she's like, you know, criticizing the Saudi Arabia shows. Now, and here's the thing about the Saudi shows I don't like them. But at the same time, I think you're starting to see like, like steps being made in that country, yeah. more progressive steps yeah. because of these events. Like UFC women, and WWE man, they're on the forefront of it. Women are re women were wrestling, and yes, they have to wear those weird Power Ranger costumes. But like, <laughs> they're it's it's steps. So you know, I get there's good with the bad. Yes, is it like 
I don't know. I, it's such well, a it's such a loaded topic, you know. Because you don't topic. sexualize the women there. See, they're in their Power right. Ranger costumes. No, yeah. you don't want to sexualize people in show business. Never. You know what? I used to get really like pissed about the Power Ranger costumes and stuff like that. And then I heard Bailey talk about it, and somebody asked Bailey, and she was like, she was like, oh, aren't you like so mad about like you know having to like co- be fully covered up from the neck down? And she goes, I get a new action figure out of it, which is more money for me. <laughs> like. Absolutely. Every like every time we go, I get a new action figure, so I'm good with it. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, so I I think that uh, you know, I think mm-hmm. that um, Rhonda is just she sees an easy target. Look, I I had a theory a long a long time ago. I have two running theories. One is that Rowdy Roddy Piper was a Time Lord from Doctor Who, <laughs> and that when he <laughs> and that he regenerated into Ronda Rousey, <laughs> and the other. <laughs> The other is that the leather jacket is a Horcrux from Harry Potter. And he's like, Colt, Colt, come here, come here, my son, Colt. When I go, I want you to take this jacket and you'll give it to that tough bitch over there. You'll give it to her. And then she put it on. The, the spirit of the hot rod just took her over. <laughs> this is like a thing that, you know, like she's now attacking the WWE. I I don't know. It's 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 strange to me. With Ryback, do you think it's it is is he that much of a meathead like dunce or do you think that this is all just trolling and Ryback's like some secret genius who's just trying to get engagement? No, no. I, I think it's a psychosis and he can't get out of it now. This is just his thing. This is the only thing that he's known for. This is the only thing anybody uh-huh. that gives him any attention. And he just does it. And I think Rhonda's trying to do the same thing, but for, I think it's like you said that, that, you know, dumping on Vince is, is the thing to do now. So dumping on WWE, but it's like, nobody's going to forget, who she is and nobody's going to start to like her just because you know the world is not like the enemy of my enemy is my friend kind of thing no one's right. going to like the utterly unlikable ronda rousey just because she's complaining like everyone else complains on the well not everyone but a lot of people complain on the way out it's it's so it's so transparently false yeah you know what i i could see that we got another super chat in here uh colin uh colin taylor five dollars thank you so much he says any rumors awesome. on AEW's tv deal i heard tk turned down an offer from wbd which if true is asinine for a company shedding fans i hadn't heard that um that rumor that he that he turned something down. I, I would have imagine either but it wouldn't shock me really yeah. I, I figured he was gonna just take whatever they gave him well yeah, the this, thing is, no, is there this is this Hold is on. this is what my information is. So oh, okay, uh, Joseph's got some info. Uh, yeah, now I think it's good info. I I can't verify because the person <laughs> who's going to go on the record actually left WBD, and before they left, I'm not going to say gender. They they went to another network and they signed an NDA on their way out. So uh, I lost my source, but at, what I was told is that the negotiations were they were worlds apart. Uh-huh. Going a, a year ago, that Tony overvalued everything, um, and that WD, WBD wanted some ownership and control, uh, creative control over that's the. That's interesting. Yeah. He's never, never that's, that. That, that would make sense that he would turn them down. He's yeah. never giving anyone else creative control over that product. The only reason he's doing this is because he wants to book this product. Right, and then they they walked away, and they've been away ever since. So how long ago would that have been, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, like, this would have. This was going into where we now. It was going. This was going into into the into the fall. So you know, okay. and that's when I haven't heard anything since the fall. But you know, when when they got out of the exclusive negotiating time, they were still talking, but it wasn't going anywhere. It was it was mostly Tony contacting them and them like, yeah, everything's great, um, but no, we don't have any news. No, we're not interested in Ring of Honor. No, you know, we're not interested in Max unless, uh, you know, those kinds of things. And he wasn't interested in the unlesses. And he st- and he really thinks he's going to get like a three or four times increase. And they're like, oh my we'll, God, give, we'll give you a 1.4 for Dynamite and Rampage and Collision. I'm not sure we're going to keep them, but maybe we'll put them on True TV. And That's and what we'll- I was going to just yeah. ask you. Did you hear anything about True TV? Because um, so what WBD said is they want to, like they publicly made some statement about they want to sort of rebrand True TV to be kind yeah. of sports and entertainment. And my I, what I assumed was Tony's not vocal about any WBD deal really he's just going it's great about everything like he always does because they want to stick him they want to stick the whole product on true tv if they keep it 
and that he's like fuck that but what you're saying also makes a lot of sense as well so thanks for shedding that light man and now you've got an actual I, I mean, yes it's like a you know an anonymous source obviously but you've got an you've got an actual source on this so i'm more tempted to believe you and i yeah, been, yeah. i know dose well enough outside of this to, to know that he's not going to make that up so, yeah, but I, it, my source is gone, so i've heard really, nothing hold on hold on this, this this was trying to say something what were you trying I to think, say i think something that's really telling that everyone kind of looked over was that true tv announcement and the announcement about the streaming platform that they were doing with ESPN, because none of those included anything about AEW. Right. And um, if they were building a sports streaming platform and if they're building, if they're branding a sports network, you'd think they'd want the sports based wrestling on that network. Yeah. And the fact that they said nothing about AEW in any of those press releases it tells me way more than anything you're going to hear from Meltzer or Tony or Sean Ross. Right, yeah. or any mm -hmm. I have some information on that as well. And please that that whole network thing the the streaming thing was completely overblown all it is is like a competitor for roku everybody every show that's on tnt and tbs and all of their networks and all of the channels is going to be on that platform every single one of them without exception it's it's it it's fractions of pennies you know you know on that that's that's not a lot of extra money it might not be any extra money so it, that that was not a big deal everyone was trying to make it oh this is the big streaming deal first of all streaming isn't good streaming is is far inferior to being on tv unless it's like netflix and they give you five billion dollars over yeah, 10 right. years <laughs> right Usually, i mean you know, The Sopranos was on HBO. You know, uh, House of Dragon was on HBO. It's also on streaming, but Tokyo Vice, the smaller show with a, with a lesser budget, that's a streaming exclusive. The smaller shows are not the bigger ones. So I, I don't know what people think. Uh, NWA, I have a question, people. Yeah. Yeah. May, I, may I ask a question? Hey, hold on, one at a time. Awful, what do you got? Um, just very quickly, May 15th it, are the WBD upfronts. What do you see happening as far as uh, any announcements for AEW? Nothing. I, I, I mean, I'm sorry. I think he was asking me, but uh, they don't make TV deal announcements up front. Up front are for one purpose and one purpose only, and that's to sell mm -hmm. shows to advertisers to get yes. the, the rates set in. Now, last year, AEW was barely even mentioned at all the year before was mentioned a little bit more and they had like four or five people from AEW there. I think it's going to be no more than that. It's going to be nominal, but you're, there's not going to be giant announcements, but people shouldn't take that as a negative. That that's not what the purpose of the upfronts is. Everything's great at the upfronts. Every, because it's sell, sell, sell. That's why right. Andrew Zarian is always telling you positive okay. things because he's in sales. So everything he hears is from salespeople, sell, sell, sell. So he gets a lot of <clears> things <throat> right, but he gets a lot of things wrong because oh, he's always hearing sell this, sell this, sell this. Uh -huh. And so he's saying we're going to sell, but a lot of things that get sold get taken off the table later. I apologize. I thought I was muted there. Um, Okay, so here's the question then. They don't get WDB. Where do they go? Who wants them? <laughs> like, what's up there? Tony by Del Rey? Yeah. I, Sorry, say again? An, it's, it's Amazon Prime. <laughs> okay. No, I, I literally, I think Tony will buy a, a, a signal from the FCC. He'll buy whatever El, whatever El Rey was on or something. Yeah. Th there's got to be some network out there i mean like 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 the tna like the one that carries tna like what well, tna i think was on like the tv guide show if tna has const consistently managed to be on tv i have no doubt in my mind that AEW will find a home on tv but, but do you but, think tony uh, can deal with going do you consider no that's yeah not. that's the thing i don't think tony can take the demotion and money he'd rather he'd rather foot the bill himself and, and have the tv station himself than admit that he's on pop tv or tv guy getting you know four million dollars a year right Tube is a TV show a tv station what Tubi is a TV station. It is technically, yeah, and, but that already yeah. has DNA on it too. So, um, but it does, the, I don't know that. <laughs> yeah, down no, TNA is on Tubi. Uh, but, but Tubi wow. isn't giving give anyone forty-five million dollars a year. Tubi's good, not right. giving anyone four and a half million dollars a year. No, Tubi does really well. By the actually, Tubi's very successful. You'd be surprised. Tubi's one of the only. Yeah, it's one of the I'm only streaming surprised. services that is successful. Yeah, uh, the, because um, it's cheap. It's, yeah. it's spend, it doesn't spend a lot of money. It gives you a lot of programming, a lot of old programming. It buys relicense rate. It's like when you get you go to Walmart and you get the uh, the the fast talk. You get the 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 companies that lease lines from AT and T or Verizon. They just give it to you for less money because Verizon's already making money from it on their customers. 
yeah, the uh, gosh, I, I can't imagine this. Gonna, I think part of it for Tony and the reason why WBD and, you know, he's done all those interviews where he's like, we want to stay at this network forever, which is the worst thing you could possibly say when you're trying to negotiate for a new television deal. Like, we'll do anything to be on your network. Longer. <laughs> I think it's just it was the network that WCW was on. And that's what yeah. he wants. He wants to be on wrestling on because that's it was all oh, wrestling returns to TNT and TBS. Uh, but now, you know, they're moving the impractical jokers over to TBS and that show. I mean, like it's on 24 hours a day. So, you know, they they might think that Wednesday nights might have a better lineup if it's Big Bang Theory leads into impractical jokers. Mm hmm. Absolutely. Do you so. dose? Do you have any insight on like? So I'm hearing that like also there's like people are offering to just buy AEW. Do you think that was WBD? Like, would they just trying to buy it outright, or do they just want to? Do they just wanted to buy in to it? If, if they, I, I don't think that there's actually anybody who wants to buy it. But WBD, I don't think they wanted to buy in. I think they wanted to get equity in exchange for uh you know less money they wouldn't pay themselves and they wanted to get uh you know some control so it was going to be more like bartering um now the whole thing about the forbes and it's worth two billion dollars that's all nonsense no no <laughs> yeah. real no. money person oh, but dave Meltzer said that it's worth like yeah. five billion dollars <laughs> <Right>. exactly <laughs> I, we, I up have... match ratings um did you did you read them this week I saw that Raw got got a really big cage match rating. It was like a nine point something from last night. Um, well, cage match ratings actually don't dictate. Uh, and then Kenny Omega was also saying how oh, Kurt Angle's his favorite wrestler. So there you go, Dave. You fucking you fucking up, buddy. Yeah, Kurt, Kurt Angle, who he never gave a single five star match yeah. in his entire career. Yeah, Kurt Angle. That, that like, guy never did. But John Moxley has got all <laughs> of these. Like, oh my goodness, uh, every single time. That Dave Meltzer talks, I just have one thought and one <laughs> thought only. I have never heard so many lies in my entire life other than when I was saying them. That is the quote that I attribute <laughs> to Dave Meltzer constantly. Uh, goodness. That is some really good. So we, we got another we got another super chat here. Um um, I dags I five dollars says, will this be made available as a podcast? I appreciate your work. Shoot. Um, well, I, I guess it's a shoot. Yes. And I, I my plan is to, uh, you know, get it up on a podcast platform at some point. I'm, I haven't like I've done like some preliminary looks into it. You know, I'm not like super like, you know, uh, knowledgeable in that world. So I'm just trying to. Hit trying me up, to Marv. Right, OK, absolutely. absolutely. Um, Marv, I have a couple of things. So. I'm sorry if I missed some things. Um, did we talk about Dave's constant L's lately? We talked about a few of them. We, you <laughs> okay. came in right as we were talking about the, um, you know, the 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 line about the it doesn't make logical sense, but it makes, you know, um, booking sense. Booking sense. Yeah. Uh, but what what what, what other game. L's? I mean, the, the major L that he took recently was the was the Rock. Who's yeah. the rock yeah. smacking him down, laying the smack it down on his candy ass? Um, yeah. So that what that story was, folks, is that the you know Dave Meltzer was reporting that um, you know TKO wants the Rock to tone down his language because the WWE wrestlers are all you know expected to be PG, and he has to set an example. And the Rock literally responded, "This is horse shit." And then dropped a literal f bomb at the end of Raw this week yeah. wow. <laughs> with blood. So it's like amazing. Oh, just just L after L. And after other L. people were cussing and shit too. That needs yeah. to be pointed we, out and highlighted. Punk did, punk like everybody it. went out there and went, "Hey, fuck Meltzer." It was like a fuck Meltzer episode. You want flippy shit? You want story? You want big star? What do you want, Dave? We got everything on this show. <laughs> didn't punk, didn't punk call somebody hey, dipshit? Has to prove. Let's go. I'm pretty sure Punk <laughs> said dipshit. And yeah, like, oh yeah. whoever's sitting down there with the with the dump button, oh man, that poor that 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 must be a terrible job when the rock is out there. But you know, the thing I think I said on on Phil's show, uh, Pro Russell Times podcast, hey, a little sure. plug for you, Phil. Uh, right. Is why would you want the Rock to be PG? Who wants the Rock when he's not being the Rock? Like Fuck not me. <laughs> there, there is no reason to bring the Rock in if he's not allowed to be the Rock. I can't. I I would never want that. Um, and, and yeah, nobody is telling the rock what to do. Well, uh, no, Jumanji 16, he's PG. <laughs> yeah. If, if you want to see PG rock, <laughs> go watch the tooth fairy, but you know, yeah. 
I've said it on my show, too. I'm going to say it here. He's going to do the Netflix Adam Sandler thing, too. He's going to get out of the Hollywood box office game. He's going to film everything on his schedule, which it already is, but in Hollywood, it's a little tougher. He's uh-huh. going to do, he's just going to get like 70 mil up front or 100 mil up front from Netflix to just produce his own fucking movies like Adam Sandler does now. And Netflix has kind of become happen. like where you go. Uh, when your career takes like a like that kind of turn, like Adam Sandler. Well, he also has the highest viewed Netflix movie ever as well. That's so that very true. So there you go. It's like it's a win win for them the way they can at least spin it to I don't know. Yeah. You know. But I mean, you know, uh, worst director in the entire history of the world forever and always, Zack Snyder, was uh, is now on Netflix, <laughs> thinking up that platform. Yeah. So, dude. By the way, guys, if you want me to get on a soapbox about Zack Snyder, it does not take much. It, it's like it's like. It's like the old uh, Family Guy quote, where like you know they said like a like a like a you stink message from India to Pakistan, and all of a sudden the missiles start flying. You're like that did not take much. Right. <laughs> Do you feel like um, uh, being on Netflix is like a death sentence for no one's career? No. Like you know you get the big bucks at the Look end. At Sandler. Look no. at Sandler, man. Sandler, Sandler making money hand of a fist. Dude. And now he's Dave doing Chappelle what? And Williams. Come yeah. On. And yeah, when the movies are successful, like uh, I believe it's called Uncut Gems, right? Then you take it and you put it in, in theaters after. That's yeah. the game plan now. It, so The it, Rock, it, he has a miss. It stays on Netflix, gets gets to be one of their highest viewed movies. He has a hit. He takes yeah. it to the box office anyways. It's a win-win. And by the Taylor way, three, three body problem. Hold on, hold on. Is, one at a time. Uh, this three body go. problem is, is, is like supposed to be one of the greatest sci-fi shows like ever. Yeah, it's on Netflix. Sandler got enough stroke back that he's doing Happy Gilmore too. I can't wait for that. I don't too. want that. I don't I do. want that. So, I, like, as well, also now with without Carl Weathers, really, like, we're gonna do that without oh, Carl yeah, Weathers. Like, right. But then again, like, he died in the movie. But spoilers, by the way, if you if you've never seen Happy Gilmore, but yeah. uh, yeah, we could have gotten like glowing blue Carl Weathers in there if they had done it earlier. But I, I, look, at I am hesitant anytime modern hollywood is like we're taking this thing that you like and we're doing a sequel or a reboot i'm like no please don't yeah true true it it used to be to the point like marvel would be like we are gonna do a space epic with a talking raccoon and you've never heard of these characters but it's good just just trust us and i was like all right i'm strapped in mr feige let's go and now they're like we're gonna do another spider-man and i'm like that's probably gonna suck yeah (laughs) you're curled up in the shower like okay (laughs) Ask me a towel. If we're taking a little Hollywood detour here, I yeah. saw Ghostbusters. What did you think of Ghostbusters? Because I heard that I've heard meh. Spoiler free. Bleh. Okay, here's 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 what I gotta say. Number one, I'm a little biased because I'm ghost. I'm Mister Ghostbusters. I love Ghostbusters. Okay. But this is like if they took the real Ghostbusters cartoon and turned it into a movie. And if that sounds good to you, you'll That's like actually the appealing to me. Yeah, so a little funny thing about me when I when I first saw the Ghostbusters, it was in like the 90s and Ghostbusters and Beetlejuice. I thought that they were movies that were made of the cartoons. Mm-hmm. What's funny? You know, what's funny. You know, what the trailer was before Ghostbusters was Beetlejuice, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh man, well, sure. Makes sense. You know what? I don't love Beetlejuice one because I, I saw Beetlejuice for the first time like a couple years ago, like on Halloween. Um and I just was like, this is it. Like, I don't like, I don't love Tim Burton. Like, you had I had to see it at the time. You had, yeah, to be, I, you know, I don't have any like nostalgia. Like, that's why I saw the Goonies as an adult and I was like, what? Why? Why am yeah. I watching this? And somebody was right. like, you have no nostalgia for it. And I said, no, yeah. I certainly do not. This is a whole, I couldn't even it's, make it through the whole thing. It's one of those weird things where it's like you've seen so many things referencing it and you've seen so many things inspired by it that you might as well have seen the movie. So when you actually go see the movie, it feels like a retread it feels like it's already been done to you know um yeah but ghostbusters like i said if you're a ghostbusters fan or if you like the cartoon i would check it out if you aren't it's you can miss it it's 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 a, my son loved it but he loves all the ghostbusters movies so. I, I heard that dan Aykroyd does a decent amount of work in it but that bill murray likes texted his lines and yeah it. you know who sucked in it Bill Murray. Um, the guy, uh, <laughs> what's his name? The dude Andy that's in everything now. The guy that All was Rudd. In, no, uh, he was fine. Um, the Wolfgang kid. The, that kid, kid. Wolfgang, um, the guy who's in uh, Silicon Valley. Okay, I don't know who you're talking about. Yeah, but he you... was in the Eternals. <laughs> he was the star of the Eternals. Oh, him. Uh, yeah, Camille, uh, the, guy, the, guy that, the, the guy that cried because they made him do sit-ups. Yeah. <laughs> Kit Harrington or Rob Madden? What? 
No, the the the, 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 one was the, the one that was the Bollywood star in uh, oh, Emil Nanjiani. That's there you yeah, go. Emil yeah. Nanjiani. Yeah, oh, he's, he's in Chicago. He started out as a comedian in Chicago. Can I tell you when he yeah. was in Obi when he was in Obi Wan when he was in the Obi Wan Kenobi show, which th- that has a lot. He's not the biggest problem with that by far. But when he's in the Obi Wan Kenobi show, I'm sitting there like, oh my god, like why isn't this Hondo Onaka? Like why didn't you just give me a live action Hondo Onaka? Because the one thing that I wanted in that Obi Wan show, because I'm a Clone Wars guy, like I loved the Clone Wars cartoon. Right on. Like I just wanted Obi Wan to walk into a place and then all of a sudden you just hear Kenobi and it's and he's got to deal with Hondo. That would have been so much fun. But we weren't allowed to have fun in that show. So, no, we you know, not. no, no fun for you. But, yet, no, that guy, I I do not like. Um, I, yeah, I just really don't like the way he um, complained about, like, having to work out. And, you know, it was just like, come on, you're in a superhero movie. If you don't want to work out, don't do a superhero movie. Yeah. Right. Or be Ben Affleck and then they'll build a suit. To... <laughs> Oh gosh. Uh, uh, we got another super chat here. Dollar 99 from John. J- oh, John JID 999 again. He says, Do y'all think the new Pirates movie will be good? No. Who's <laughs> no, in it? Is not. it Johnny Depp no. or what? Who, who we have not no. they, they haven't announced. Uh, they, they offered Johnny Depp all the money in the world to come in and, and be Captain Jack Sparrow again. But when the Amber Heard situation went down yeah. and Disney dropped him from Pirates, then they were like, oh, you're proven innocent. Now we don't have to publicly drag you anymore. And we'll take you back. Johnny Depp was like, hey, I've got all the money that I will ever need. No. Tim, they, like, they announced it's a reboot. They they announced it's ugh, a reboot. Ugh. I understand. Also, uh, isn't what's her, isn't uh, Harley Quinn in it? Um, Margot Robbie? Yeah. I mean, uh, why not? Be like you, yeah, why not? Why not exactly? Well, no complaints there. Things are looking up. Captain Jackie Sparrow? Yeah, probably. <laughs> oh, she's uh, so oh. stunning and brave as she takes to the high seas. Yeah, well, <laughs> the first it's movie was good. the only good one, so there's no reason that I think this the is first, the, fir- the first the curse bold of the black claim there, Dose. Curse of the no, that is not a bold claim. That's a pretty that's a pretty simple claim. <laughs> okay. The, I like the, I like the, the Curse of the Black years. Pearl is a is a perfect movie. Like like I remember sitting in the theater being like, wow, like this is really something. And then when we got to part two, we got part two was meaningless. Like, you know. I like I like At World's End. I think that one has some good stuff. I like Davy Jones as a character. Yeah. Um, I, I like what three, they did right? with the story. That was three, yeah, yeah. But so then, like the not the next two were just oh, yeah. So the first three were good. Then, yeah. You, the problem with the last one, and I, if you guys want us to get back into wrestling, you can tell us to get back to wrestling. <laughs> but I mean, personal. like when you get me when you get me started on movies, I'm called the movie monster for a reason. Uh, with, um. The problem with the last one was Captain Jack was just a bumbling buffoon for the entire movie. And the point of him is that he, yes, he is bumbling, but there has to be that element of that's the greatest pirate I've ever seen. Like, remember from the beginning where, like, right. yes, he's falling around and he's wacky and he's goofy. And, like, like do you think he plans it all out in advance? It just makes it up as he goes along. There's, there's this level of skill that's underneath the surface. Drunken master. Like, you know what he's like? Yeah. He's sort of like Will Ospreay. I mean, he's sort of, he's sense, sort of like yeah. that, that oh, goofy confidant. It brought it full circle. Yeah. Let's go. There we go. <laughs> all right. Oh, I see Zane Vicious is there in the comments. Zane Vicious, uh, I, I think he doesn't like me because I love the PWC network. The what? Exactly. <laughs> I've, never heard, I've, never, I've never, I've never heard those words before. I'm gonna do a real I'm quick sorry, shout Zane. out here. Flawed joined us tonight. You should go check out Flawedzilla on you at YouTube. His yes. channel. Yeah. Uh, great guy, and he does great reactions. And he's he. I, I I've been a big fan of his for years. Um, oh yeah. And I, he came out to support us tonight. So thank you so much. Thank, thank you for sir. being here. Awesome. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, a lot of people um, came out. We got a lot of uh, you know, wrestling soup came out. A whole a whole bunch of people came out. Did, did yeah, that was chat. cool. Yeah, no, I'm I'm very 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 happy with the turnout that we've gotten. We still got a, we we haven't dipped under a hundred people. I think this entire time. Uh, wow, even, that's now, cool. Even now, while we're talking about movies, <laughs> you know, like right, uh, cool. Okay, can I can I do one more non wrestling question here to the panel because I I'm, I want to hear your opinions on this. All right. Who Before you saw- ask that, Marv, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm I got a roll, guys. But listen, I I sank into a, to being a listener because you guys are just all so fucking great. That was that it oh, was it was great Awful. to be on you the panel great. with you guys. That was you- fucking awesome. Thank you, sir. Holy you shit. were great. You were great on my podcast too, Awful. You got to come back and do it another time, man. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, peace to the chat and peace to the panel, guys. Have a good all night. Right, see you, Awful. Have a good see one. Did anyone you. did anyone see the trailer? For the acolyte, no, 
No. The Acolyte, brought to you by Harvey Weinstein's former personal assistant, Leslie Headland. Oh, the Star Wars show. Oh, oh yeah, you know, I did actually. It I did was, now. Yeah, you yeah. can just feel her presence in every shot. Like, I can't, yeah, as a writer, I, I can't stand this thing where you have to put yourself into everything. I just, I think that this is going to be the Star Wars death sentence. It's going to be like the, the final swing of the Krebel that's going to finally, like, you know lap the head off of star wars for good I, I, all this time i've been like it can come back it can come back it's it's just a little ruined it's still good it's still good like i'm homer simpson but like i think this is gonna be <laughs> it like this is this is where the head comes off and the quickening happens so yeah they're also remaking highlander but you know it's henry cavill so I'm, i have hope on that one yeah, yeah and, then, very and you still have to cut wars. a head off so how bad can it be yeah, I know. I, I do love Highlander. Oh my goodness. That is what you know what you know what just popped onto streaming the other day that I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this. This is what I'm gonna be doing for the next week. Uh Hercules and Xena. Mm, yeah, uh, I used with, to watch those. Oh my god, those shows were my thing. Yeah, I love like, them. Like I loved those shows. It, there's such I love how they're the same universe, but they're so wildly different. And I don't know. It's just it's I had such a crush on uh, Lucy Lawless too, and then Game of Thrones came out. I was like, God damn. Uh, you know what? For, for, for me, it was uh, Kalisto, her, her big nemesis, the blonde. Yeah. Every time did she you, came on, my my movie monster hot would thump a little. Uh, you know, did a you see? Did you see Lucy Lawless on the Battlestar Galactica reboot? Uh, no, I, I didn't. did. I saw. I saw that one. I like that. I like that show a lot. And I never watched the original uh, Battlestar Galactica. Yeah, the re with the reboots much, but I I did a deep dive onto with a sci-fi writer and and science reporter. Uh, Garden of Doom. We did one show on Battlestar Galactica and one show on Babylon Five, which are like two of my favorites. Babylon Five is my mm. favorite show of all time. There, well, you got to check out that episode. Then I am so you excited think. that you just said that dose because no one ever likes it. Like I, I'm like I this show why they is don't. Ev this show is everything. Like it is it so is. far ahead of its time. Like oh my god, I cannot even say enough good things about Babylon Five. Good. I, we're, we're, you're good. You listen to the show and then the, and then I'll come on the show, your show, and we'll talk about it. Or oh something. my gosh, yes. I mean, or like, offline, I don't care. I I, yeah. I love it too. I watch it the, like every the, two years. The, the characterization of Londo Malari is just it's it's exquisite character work. It's I mean. But you know, most of the cast is dead, and so they can't really do. It. They they were going to do a reboot, um, but then they didn't. So you know, I, I think I know. the CW didn't pick it up because that's when the CW like ran out of money and then spent whatever money that it had on NXT. And that brings us back to wrestling. What do you guys think is going to be? It's going to be like DJ wrestling. What do you think it's going to be like when NXT moves to CW? Do you think I, we're going to see a big change in the way the product is presented? I definitely think we're going to see more people tuning. Yeah, in. I think yeah. we're going to see better production. Um, than we have normally seen on USA Network because, yeah, um, while the ratings are low on CW, let's the fact is is that it's free TV, literally free TV. All you need to do is buy an HD antenna and you can watch it. You don't need cable to watch the CW. So, I I think it really um, does well for the you know the folks in the PC to learn how to actually work. Um, primetime television and i think it would do a lot for the channel as well so the ratings that we get now we think of you know what do they get usually like 600 it's about right? 600 000. Yeah. yeah that was my next question was do you think that when they make the move to cw all of a sudden nxt now is out drawing dynamite i think it will yeah. sure. I, think, <laughs> I think it will the the thing people don't realize about like cw is that it attracts a lot of middle America. That's yeah. kind of who they get. Like the teen drama stuff is over. <clears throat> Anybody who thinks that's still CW, that's not CW anymore. CW right. is going from middle America, rural places, stuff like that. Um, so it's, it'll be interesting because they're not going to lose the people who watch them on USA. Obviously, those people are diehard. They're going to follow them wherever they go. So to get this other crowd who isn't, who maybe isn't as used or doesn't follow their current product that they see it's on free tv they can watch it they like wrestling right and it's kind of a harken back to like the attitude era okay and they it's love the studio attitude, wrestling you know? it's it's studio wrestling yeah, it's, it's studio a mix wrestling, of studio yeah. wrestling and, and there's the a lot of pretty era, girls on it it's kind of and, all that mixed in i think it'll do really well on yeah. cw and there's tons say, of character work i think it'll do well as well dude i'm gonna mm. say yes it will be dynamite on, yeah, on a regular basis, not yeah, I think not it will every too. week, but on a regular basis. 
I mean, I mean, you look at, I, I never really looked at like what kind of numbers like Arrow or The Flash were doing. Um, I mean, the only show I still watch in the CW is Superman and Lois, and that's ending after the next season. By the way, the best Superman that's ever been is Tyler Hoechlin. He's you so, think? He's so good. He's okay. so good. He There's this moment in the last season where basically like this woman is like going to explode essentially and die. And he's, he takes her and he flies with her up into the sky so that she doesn't hurt anyone. And as he's flying up with her, he's saying to her, like, you did good. You know, you were a great mother. Your family loves you. And I'm like, that's Superman. He inspires. Like we never get that from it. Oh, nobody knows how to write Superman. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, let, let alone Zack Snyder, which <laughs> um, <laughs> I was about to say, Zack Snyder, <laughs> calm down, calm down. <laughs> he's snapping a man's neck. Yeah. That's Superman. <sighs> so if I can on NXT though, I've always been a, a proponent of get that shit the fuck off of TV and don't show anybody these people until they're refined. Because sometimes now I, I, I watch NXT every week. I love listening to Booker on commentary and Vic Joseph. I think they're great. Uh -huh. um, I think every the character work there. I, every podcast I put it over. Their character work is tremendous. HBK, he's rolling. But that's a me, live competition I, you're talking about. What, Phil. Do you, what do you think? Yeah. But I feel like OV when it was like OVW or whatever it was, it doesn't FCW, whatever, but like film everything, have it in the history books. I don't know. And like, obviously they're doing good business with the, um, the, what are they called? The takeovers, right? Yes. The stand and yeah. deliver these. So the yeah. roadblock, whatever they are. So they're doing good with those two. I'm not hating on it. I love how they do themed events. I like that it exists, but to me, I'm like the developmental, like Tiffany Stratton did some of her best career shit in NXT on that show that the, you can't really duplicate again on on smackdown unless the ducks align or you're willing to like sort of repeat yourself so i i've always been a proponent of like when you're building these people like you gotta almost keep them off tv but maybe i'm wrong i don't know that's just my opinion hey, you know, here's the thing right um i think the advantage of going to cw is to really get them for that prime time right bringing up the production value bringing up the acting bringing up um, the their in ring work as well because you're right you know what Tiffany was doing in NXT can't really be duplicated in SmackDown but um, when they are sh doing a show for a bigger audience on the CW now uh, you think about CW SmackDown right it's it's I'm sorry CW uh, Fox pretty equivalent in terms of free TV right um, so it's a lot more pressure. A uh, higher production, right? So I think hopefully they'll go more into the higher production value for NXT to be able to get those people ready for the prime time. So it'll be more plug and play rather than you know trying to. And that is the benefit of it. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right about that. That is the big benefit of NXT. Like you get them ready for when they do go on television. People don't get it, man. Being on live TV, you got to mm -hmm. know your spots, your timing, not to hurt a motherfucker. Don't hurt yourself. Remember your words on your promo. Like wrestlers are doing so much and it is a skill you need to refine. And again, not to bring it back to AEW, but you do see a lot of that in AEW or the lack thereof. Well, you don't, you don't need to bring it back to AEW. Let's talk about someone in WWE, Maxine. Uh, yeah. She gets a lot of hate, and I do not add to that because Maxine was plucked out of the PC by Vince McMahon because he thought she was, what is it, white panty hot or whatever he calls yeah, it. You're, you're oh, white God, panty God. hot. what he said. And, yeah. Oh, and, don't well, look at my he, text. That's what he said about Sable, and I imagine he thought. But anyway, and she wasn't ready, and you can see that she wasn't ready. Now, granted, I have more respect for her than a lot of people because she wants to be a wrestler. She's putting in the time. She's already established on TV and popular, and she is a, oh, an over, so they keep her on TV. And she's trying to learn and do her best, but she could have used another two years uh, down in NXT. Uh -huh. And... um. You know, it makes you wonder what star she could have been had Vince not done that. But I get why they don't throw her back down there now because she's a crazy over character and people. Right. You know, I mean, you know, so, it is always possible in the future, though, to send her back down. They look at Baron Corbin has a permanent yeah. locker in NXT. Well, like, actually, they him. have been. So uh, sorry, the, but the, the Alpha Academy, they do. They are in NXT. In fact, Maxine and Otis were just on last week's episode. They mm -hmm. they just popped up in a backstage segment. So she does go down there. And so does Otis and Gable and stuff, which is cool 
as well. Yeah. Um, and Tazawa. They're on tonight. The by the way, they have a tag team match to get into. There you the go. So title. they're in a tag. So she and I just love her as a valet. I don't see even the need to put her in matches personally. But I, mean, I would um, assume I'm that okay. a lot of those guys live down there, right? Like in the yeah, no, they all in do, in the Orlando yeah, area because yeah, like yeah. That, I would assume they moved there when they got signed and then just kind yeah. of stayed because it's probably beautiful. And right. I agree that Maxine is great as a valet, but if she really, if she wants to put in the work and be a wrestler, I'm not going to fault her for it. Right. Like she, and she is, you know, everything yeah. you hear, like all that stuff that you see Gable doing where he's training her and stuff like that's all actually true. They are on the road training all the time, but she should be in the PC. She shouldn't be doing that. Yeah. But you know, it's what's done is done. You can't turn back time now. So you can't, you can't, right. yeah. Put, put the genie back in the bottle. Yeah. I right. Get it. Oh boy. Yeah. Wow. So we are, we are pushing 11 o'clock, uh, gentlemen, I think, uh, you know, maybe one more topic and then, uh, we head out for the night. What do you say? Oh, for a good All one. Right, let's pick let's it to the topic. Yeah. Make it a, make I it saved the, I, I saved the biggie for last. <laughs> so biggie, biggie, uh, biggie. there's going to be a protest at a WWE show in the next. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh boy. Here we go. I'm glad I didn't miss this. Uh, so <laughs> the the Westboro Baptist Church, aka the 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 taint of the universe, uh, is going to be protesting um, at a WWE event. Uh, I guess because of the Vince McMahon stuff, and people have been retweeting this in a positive light, but doing so, and I firmly believe doing so in a way that is because they did not look into what the Westboro Baptist Church I actually hope so. is. <laughs> Now, For if sure. you've never heard what the Westboro Baptist Church Google is, <laughs> maybe Google it before you retweet something. Yeah, I have to Google Commander. You have to Google Westboro Baptist Church, dude. Yeah. Okay, here's the thing. Don't go to their website, though. And this no. will explain everything. Their website is God Hates Blank. And the, I'm not going to say what the blank is. I think the, the can, I think um, the, the term that we that they say is F slur now. Yes, yeah, uh, uh, it, it is a it is a derogatory term for homosexual people. No, yeah. go to their website. That's who they are, and they're yeah. and you know what? They're even worse. They are. So they are the that, worst people on on the planet. So here's my question: How does that link at all to Vince McMahon? I don't know because it does not seem like a thing that they counsel. If you're trying to talk, you mute. You've got oh, yourself sorry, muted. Um, uh, you, you know, I, I, I think what it is because I know, know about this, you know, hate group for a long time now, way before all this stuff. Yeah. Um, and you know, I think for, for a core group of people, they're really so psychologically damaged for whatever reason by WWE that they think WWE is the worst thing in the world and nothing could be worse than, than that. I don't really think it has to do with what Vince done. Of course, Vince is a vile motherfucker. Don't get me wrong. Um, but I think it has to do with, oh, they didn't put on the wrestling that I like. They lied to me. They didn't put over the great people that I that I wanted to be put over. So now they they see this and they want to pit, nitpick every single thing, even though it might mirror and parry what's going on in the other company um, in some instance. Oh, that they yeah. just want to follow along. I totally understand why people who don't like WWE are jumping on the bandwagon. Why is Westboro Baptist Church have? Why do they care at all about the? Vince That's the thing. Like this is not the kind of thing that the Westboro Baptist Church. Uses. Like so, what they do is like you know they'll protest LGBT things. They'll protest soldiers' funerals, which is ridiculous. Like uh, the, yeah, they they are just the worst of the worst. Like a grieving widow of a hero soldier that died overseas has to deal with these idiots waving their stupid signs in her face. They are the lowest form of life on this planet, and I really thought look i make it a point to not celebrate anyone's death okay i don't i don't ever believe that i made an exception when fred phelps dropped dead he was the guy who started the westboro baptist mm -hmm. church he is the hateful old man that if you google them if you look on youtube you'll find um you know videos of fred phelps uh he passed away a little while ago and i thought like oh you know what we're probably through the worst of it a couple of the like if you look up megan phelps uh she was one of the ones that kind of like got out and like you know went off on her own and she's spoken out a lot about the church and like what her mother is doing uh it, it is it is a vile vile hate group and for people to sit there and try to tell me like oh well you know what does that say about wwe that they're the good guys in this situation they are never the good guys yeah okay? just watch the documentary it's called like the most hated family in the world mm -hmm. or like the most whatever just watch that documentary the daughter ends ended up like leaving the family escaping somehow yeah megan megan Phelps, yeah yeah oh yeah so um, that's a name 
yeah so um yeah just watch that shit and just tell tell me otherwise so it's just funny that so, yeah, that people even jumped on. And, and and yeah, just I don't understand how it connects to WWE. But someone in the chat said WWE is what's popular right now. And they just want the attention. Right. I'm just inclined to believe it's it's honestly is that. that. But is, is that how po- do we not realize how popular WWE is in pop culture right now? Because like for them to jump on WWE of all things, when there's so much other like if they they don't like gay people. That's their thing. Right. They 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 were. um protesting soldiers funerals because of don't ask don't tell being abolished that was the whole reason for was that it, it? I, I never understood yeah. the soldier thing that okay. was why they did it so <clears throat> to connect that to wwe doesn't make sense if it's just the popular thing you'd think they'd be going after hollywood or something else well they that, do they have it's you just, know they try the last thing they did was hawaii they they yeah. they said god hates hawaii, hawaii they well, Hawaii made gay marriage legal, and they said oh, that okay. it was going to be the end of Hawaii. And they went over to Hawaii. I think they just wanted to go to Hawaii, right? And they yeah. all- <laughs> well, they wanted to go to Hawaii and write it off. That's on- it. They just want to go watch wrestling, and this gives them an excuse to do it. Well, that's the thing. When they went to go protest Kevin Smith's movie Red State, they went in and watched the movie. Yeah, that's it. They just want to watch wrestling. They're all a bunch of hicks who love wrestling, and this it's gives them an excuse. To- they can write it off. When they do it this way, <laughs> I I have a re I have a big like uh I have a huge uh like bit for headlock headlines this week all surrounding <laughs> the, this issue with the Westboro Baptist Church. But yeah, they they are just the worst people that have ever crawled out of the primordial ooze. Uh, Fred Phelps was the man who made me wish there was a hell. I'm like I'm like please let hell actually exist because I need to believe that these people are heading there one day. Um, they are somebody somebody said to me like one what. Like something that sticks out. Somebody was like to me, "Well, have they ever done anything as homophobic as the Undertaker Canyon segment?" I'm like, "Yes, yes, yes, yes. yeah." <laughs> Literally, look it up for two seconds. There exists. <laughs> That's the only get is like, and they were a church. They things- it's they're not okay. a wrestling to- yeah. television show, <laughs> right? They say things like that, but then they don't realize. You know, look at their website, look at the photos, look at the countless articles. Go to, um, you know. <sighs> What is this? Uh, Southern Law Center, something like that. Whatever is the website that um, has a database of hate groups, and it's actually fun. look at that stuff, and you'll see like what they do is nothing. Uh, it, it's sorry, what WWE does with storylines and whatever is nothing compared to what these people actually do. You know, yeah. um, nothing can compare to what what these people do. That just just shy of 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 violence. It was the only the violence would be the only thing that could make them any more abhorrent. You know, well, it, it's probably, probably, oh my God, look, I got I gotta point out this this from the chat. <laughs> okay, now I want to see Pretty Deadly go out and meet the West. Oh, I would fuck <laughs> it. I would love it. Could you imagine if WWE like it like like fully <laughs> like like sent Pretty people out to like, like, like sent our tr- yeah. like sent our truth out there? <laughs> <laughs> the, okay, you know, people ask me a lot, and going back to what Counselor was saying, people ask me a lot about like, you know, what can we do, what what we can do to get followers or that kind of thing on uh, X or whatever. Number one thing, even it doesn't even have to do with followers. When you're gonna make a comment about something that you don't understand, just do a Google search. Just do one Google search on it, uh, and because look, and it if would you're take wrong, so much trouble, yeah, and if you're wrong and you're proven wrong, own it. Own say it. I'm say I'm sorry. I was wrong. I yeah. do that all the time. Whenever, I whenever, whenever I say something and somebody confronts me with it, and they're like, "Here's the reason why you're wrong," or they present a good argument, you have to be flexible enough in your belief, not so much in your beliefs, but like in you, flexible enough to look at things from another perspective. Yeah. And then if they're right and you're wrong, just be like, "Yeah, and, I'm wrong." And don't just take, don't just say, "You know what? You're right. I was wrong," and then delete everything. Leave up the fact that you said you were wrong. Let yeah. people. Yeah. You got to be open about it because if because the worst the only thing... time the only time I've deleted something I left up my my admission that I was wrong but I deleted something because I was like it could I I don't know I didn't want it to stay up there because it could have been damaging to somebody yeah so you know that's but yeah I I understand exactly what you're saying you can let people see that you that you're a human being that you're not right. going to be tribal tribalism is what is kind of destroying wrestling and it... our next the next uh, song parody that I got coming out is going to be uh, pretty much focused exactly on that tribalism right and and top of that too one of the things is missing it is missing is integrity right like you're saying you know admit when you're wrong and just move on um one thing i see a lot is like when you point something out with actual 
uh, proof either it gets ignored or it's like, oh, yeah, you know, kind of dismissing that they were wrong mm-hmm. and kind of acknowledging sure. it too in, in, in a little sense, but then just kind of like doubling down, you know. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, you can't tell me, um, you know, um, let's say, for example, the gold dust, you know, character um, back then, so many, so many years ago, is worse today than it, it than what what this church is doing at um, funerals, you know, yeah. or or at courthouses and whatnot when it comes to the LGBTQ population. Yeah, and you know what? To, oh, go back. To, you, go, go ahead. ahead. No, okay, go ahead, going dude. back to the tribal thing. Going back to the tribal thing, real quick. Um, I think one thing that like. It, 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 I don't think anybody here like hates AEW and doesn't want it to exist. I think most of us here, at least, we are frustrated with the way things are happening there and we want it to be better. And that's, I, I love the idea of as much wrestling out there as I can, but I'm going to be critical about the wrestling that I think is bad. And I'm critical when it comes to WWE, I'm critical when it comes to AEW. My AEW stuff gets more traction because people yeah. interact with it more, but, um, it, it that's the thing is that like i just want good wrestling and as much of it as possible so i think that like just be honest that's the biggest thing is you're 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 only beholden to the truth right you're only beholden uh-huh. to what you believe and if you can go out there and say this is what i believe and i'm proud of it then you shouldn't have a problem uh, but but there's no reason to just hate something because it has the letters aew or wwe on it give it a chance see what it is and be critical of it if you want and if you feel like you have to be and that that's how i have been this entire time. i mean i think i at first i got a little carried away um we all I think we're all trying to be better we all did. Yeah. I, I'm I'm incredibly guilty of it. I was I was rage tweeting and I was like getting into arguments with people about this stuff. And I was like, I, I don't know. I was just like so obsessively hating on it. And then one day I just kind of like I think as the channel started to grow and I started to like kind of preach that like, oh, we should all be able to laugh at ourselves. We should all be able to like see past that. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm not practicing what I'm preaching here. Like, like I, I'm, it's almost like, it's just kind of like a pretty slogan. And then I started to look at it and I'm like, wow, yeah, I've been part of the problem here. And, and since then I've been trying to be better about it. And right. I think if, if we can all, you know, take a look at that and, you know. Yeah. The craziest part about, about my situation though, is if you go back to the early days of my podcast, I'm fucking putting AEW over like heavily like i i was a big fan like for a long time i still am a fan i watch every fucking show i watch every you Rampage. own an orange cassidy shirt yeah dude i and i have other ones i got okada shirt i got bullet club over i'm wearing an nwo wolf pack one right now though so oh like, nice you know, yeah but um but you know, I, yeah you know but i i fucking um uh, man i loved kenny omega i loved his stuff in new japan i like what aw was doing a lot at the start um the pandemic really fucked them up that's where they instantly went into like Matt Hardy's going to teleport here. And, and this is so they just instantly went too crazy um, off the bat. Uh, but just as time went on, you just notice how I start putting WWE shit over. You get super attacked for it. So and then all of a sudden I'm hypercritical of something about AEW. I clip it. It gets more hits. Exactly. When I talk about when I'm critical of uh of, I was I was roasting damage control for like months. I clip it. Right. No one fucking no. It it doesn't get as much hits. People don't want to. So you know I kind of got attacked a lot from a lot of people. Now, I'm not crying victim at all. Like I don't give a shit. And then I just owned it and started trolling motherfuckers. And yeah, I just have fun with it now. It's honestly kind of. Can you know, I? Yeah, it's, it's, it's on the I really want to ask. Um, and I know we're kind of getting towards the end here. I really want to ask. You know whether it's their current run at AEW or just. Um, their body of work in general, because um, the comment that John brought up just now made me think of this. Uh, what who AEW you you liked either now or in the past um, that you really think has potential? Like for me, for instance, I was such a huge Juice Robinson fan. I love um, him yeah. when yeah. when he was like going for that run uh, for the U.S. title in um, New Japan. And I was like, yo, like, why does New Japan not why why isn't New Japan putting the world title on this guy? He has the promos, he has the look, like 
he's fucking got it. You know. Yeah, what well, I'm like saying? Okada and Kenny were were there around that time too, so it was hard to hard to like I guess pull the trigger on Juice. But I don't know. Like, yeah, I like Juice a lot. There's a lot of great talent. We talked about Samoa Joe earlier. He's one of my all time favorites. It's not Me even too. like. One of my all-time, probably top what? ten favorite all time. So, so, I, so I mean, let me let me narrow let me narrow the scope then. Since you said uh, Samoa Joe, can uh, can we just narrow it down to like people who have not like um, isn't this an you know, been on the topic of the platform? Um, for example, you know who got in that spotlight, but like people who are really you know whether they came to New Japan or uh, Impact or NWA and. Are in AEW now, or maybe even came up in AEW, or also um, uh, MLW as well. Excuse me, sorry, guys. I gotta go. Everyone, thank, thank you, you for tuning in. Yeah, like, subscribe, so, all that other good stuff. Uh, give Hammerlock Hangover a try. Give Garden of the Doom a try. I thank please Marvel do the great for inviting me on. And uh, thank you. Great show, and keep the conversation. It's just it's past this old man's bedtime. <laughs> You're the man, Dust. So. Yeah, so are, I, I would say, I, I think it's like, you know, is there a person that you, uh, from AEW that you were like really rooting for that's never been in WWE before? I, for, for me, I guess that would be, oh gosh, uh, I, uh, there's a couple. So like, I'm kind of like, I loved MJF in the beginning. I Wardlow probably is mine. I, I think he is such amazing mm. potential. Oh, I love him. Killed them for me, it's Kenny Omega. Um, Omega, Omega, really? You going with him? Okay. Yeah, he's I, I, he's um beyond just like the fact like I uh, I mean I'm Canadian so I got to show him love. No, that's not why though. We don't really do that shit. This is what it is, man. I feel like his pacing, his little kind of cheesy facials, how he's kind of goofy on the mic. I feel like they could really hone and reel that in if someone was writing for him and giving him good material. It worked in Japan because he's speaking sort of broken Japanese English type. Yeah. You know, he's just given like kind of hot one liners for the crowd. But uh, yeah, I just really think he can his selling and his kind of over the top cheesiness i think would work good in wwe with their pacing and um his style his moves his finisher i think all of that i think they'd turn him into like a big star now a lot of people shit on me and go no there's no way and he wouldn't take direction but i don't know about all that maybe um but i definitely think kenny in the wwe system would thrive yeah. man um but i think i think it might be a little too he needs late. a filter he needs a filter i think it might be a little too late for kenny i think, I think maybe so too. I think maybe if he would have stuck around in developmental when he was in developmental, we'd be he he could be the top guy in the company right now. Like that guy is so talented. Mm. Um, but he he you know he just falls in line so easily. I, I don't know. For me, I'm sorry, for, I'm sorry that. for me, um, MJF, uh, it's got it, like I don't I, that guy has everything. And um, I wish he's another guy. I wish you could have gone through developmental because if he had gone through developmental, and that's I agree with you about him needing to go. To, if he he goes to WWE, he has to go to NXT. Um, but a name that I don't hear thrown out a lot, and I think someone who if if you could get him thinking right, man, Darby's got something. And he would never I do it. I don't know. You, you don't can't get him to think right. You can't get him to think right. He's he's too you much. Gotta, right. You got to get him to think right. But I mean, in yeah. terms, he, just, he reminds me so much of a young Jeff Hardy. And you saw what Jeff Hardy was able to do and how much money he was able to make going through WWE. Um, and you then know, you saw every time Jeff Hardy steps foot out of WWE, he he spirals right. and goes completely out of control. Yeah. So maybe right. there is something to that. I don't know. I just there's there's something there with Darby, and I'm not a Fuck fan Darby. personally. Fuck but him because he, yeah, video came out where he was calling Kurt Angle a little bitch yeah. for tucking his tail between his legs and fucking yeah, all there's, that. There's, 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 there's really, Hook, yeah, dude. We, yeah, yeah, I mean, like Hook, and there's a whole group there that I don't understand why AEW isn't going for like 19 year old girls who use Instagram all the time. Like, they're like Hook and what's the name? The, Ricky Wayne or whatever his name is. Ricky Wayne. <laughs> yeah, Darby Nick Wayne and Hook and Anna J. They have that NXT. I get what you're saying. Like they could do the yeah, whole the high schooly 90210 type thing with all the characters they have right there in AW. They're not smart enough to do that, you know. Right, exactly. They're they're marketing they're marketing teen heartthrobs to 25-year-old dudes. Like it doesn't work that right. way. There's a whole market for that if they knew what they were doing with that. And um Darby's part of that. I think Darby I think Darby could be selling t-shirts and hot topic and 
um do you know if he had a real machine behind him i think he could be huge but he's gonna that's the problem he's gonna end up i think i think the thing that is i get what you're saying but i think the thing with darby uh that is tough is that legitimately he doesn't really care about his life you know what i'm saying (laughs) i don't know if that's fair we don't know know. we don't know him personally i mean come on look at the stuff that he's doing he wanted to come um i think he i think he's an adrenaline i think he's an adrenaline junkie and through the grace of god he got injured so he didn't have to do that right i don't i don't he did the whole thing where he said i'd rather die doing what i love than live doing what I, I hate kind of thing. I don't so, think that he's like got a death you know. wish. I just think that he's an adrenaline junkie. He wants to he wants that thrill. And mm. you know, you, I think the thrill is kind of what drives him and I've met plenty of people like that in my life. Oh. It doesn't usually end well. It usually ends with a big injury or uh, drugs. Yeah, or drugs. Um well, hopefully that. neither. Um all right, so you know, before we go, I wanted to end on a lighter note. Um Look, Phil made me watch this on his show, and now I'm gonna make everybody watch it on my <laughs> yes. Um okay. you, you are all gonna suffer along with me yes. if I had to hear this. I, I avoided this for days, and then Phil made me listen to it. So if you don't like hearing it, you know who to blame. It's Phil Mox from Pro Wrestling Times. I'm so listen sorry, his- guys. At Pro Wrestle Times, at Pro Wrestle Clips. Yes, <laughs> listen, subscribe to him, listen to his show, and flip him off while you're doing it. Uh, yes. <laughs> that's what I do. Here we go. Oh, I can't wait. Can see Ugh. it's not just me. Uh, yeah, yeah. Look, look at the look at the, the smile on his face. Look, <laughs> he's so pleased with himself. He's, he's so joyous. He thinks this is so good. <laughs> look how happy he is. <laughs> Sebastian you Bach was like, you can't, can't sing. Bro. Say you what you want about Chris Jericho. He is happier than any of us ever will be. Oh, oh, no, I know. Like, I wish I could be Jericho happy. You, you know, have to have a certain amount of delusion. I legitimately want to have somebody on the panel who actually went to the cruise and give us a oh, review I know. I know. of what it's like. That has been be what I've said since the day one of my, I was like, when I first started a Patreon on my podcast, I was like, yo, the money we I make from this, I'm going to save it up and fucking go on the Jericho <laughs> cruise and live stream from there and stuff. That was always my, my oh, bit fantastic. there, but it would be hilarious. I really want to know because with, with this bad singing, because he's doing a lot of cover stuff on that show, um, and you know the bad wrestling, um, are you actually having a good time? You know what I'm saying? Oh, we're, we're not. We're not done yet. So many others are oh. still where we're staying. We are the young. So raise your hand. This is Think bad karaoke. Problem, child. We spent a life on trial. We walk an endless mile. We are the youth gone wild. We stand <laughs> oh, no. no. We're yes. one oh. for all. The writing's the on the wall. The best is the fucking, we uh, the is the Beatles poster behind him. Guys, yeah. the rush behind him. Is the rush behind him. This is his musical lair. Tell Han, me. you have to listen to that one more time. <laughs> oh, my yeah. God. Guys, we told you not to let Aunt Lynn sign the page to get on stage. Oh, my gosh. Not in a while. We're supposed to cut her off after two drinks. Oh, man. Oh, God. It was so bad. All right. You know what? I I, can't believe this. At one point, like, around the time when AEW started, that I thought to myself, you know, when, when Jericho was doing the New Japan stuff, I was like, yo, this is really cool. This is really interesting. That he's doing this stuff with Omega, Okada. Um, I forgot the other guy who I really liked as well. Oh, um, Naito. Um, that I'm like, oh my gosh, like this is this is really going to be a generational run, right? Like, mm-hmm. I thought he I, at that time, I legitimately thought like to myself, Jericho is, is, is like the best of all time, but then that stock. Definitely went down, you know, yeah. over time for sure. It was sad to see. Sad to see. Yeah. <laughs> Neckbeard says that's what vodka does to your vocal cords. <laughs> <laughs> Good lord. Oh my goodness. All right. All right, folks. That's gonna do it for the first episode of Toonie Talk Wrestling. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We're gonna be here every Tuesday night, 
8 p.m. I might, I maybe, I might move it to 7 p.m. just to, you know, like maybe get us started a little. I'll, I'll take a little poll, see what people want to do. Uh, but thank you to everyone who contributed tonight, everyone who listened, everybody who watched, everybody who super chatted, everybody who participated in the chat. Thank you to my wonderful panel. Uh, you know, please, uh, this, uh, where can people find you? Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> at, uh, just go on X at AEW Disciplinary. That's, that's all I got. All right. Counselor, where can people find you? Um, just on X, you know, at WWF Counselor, feel free to tune on into that. I'm going to start doing a lot more videos and whatnot, but cool. also, you know, the EW trolling as always, but I'm glad to be here. I'm glad we had a great civil conversation and I'm looking forward to the next episodes in the future. Mm. All right, uh, Phil. I mean, we've been plugging you all night, but do it yeah, again, brother. Man. It's a plug machine, brother. So at Pro Wrestle Times everywhere, there's social media. I got two YouTube channels at Pro Wrestle Times where you'll find the long form PWT podcast and the PWT live show replays. The live show is live every Saturday night on at Pro Wrestle Clips YouTube channel. And thank you so much for having me, Marv. I really appreciate it. Thank you. You mean you have me on your show all the time. It was, you know. I felt obligated. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. Deep we go. <laughs> the, the, I, I'm I'm super happy to have you. Thank you so much for agreeing to come on. You know, and of course, you know, Dose gave you guys, uh, you know, his shows and 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 social media. AEW Neckbeard, obviously, also awful wrestling. It's AEW full wrestling. What a what a great panel. What a great show. What a great night. Thank you all so much for everyone here at Tony Town Wrestling. I'm Marvin the Movie Monster. Now get out of here. <laughs>